Hey, fellas, even though I just bombed that, bombed that quiz, this is Matt Schneiman. You're listening to the Pillaging Podcast. Follow him on Twitter. Season's going to get started soon. Appreciate you guys having me on. You're listening to the Pillaging Podcast. Proud member of the Crow's Nest Podcast Network. Companion podcast to PJ4F.com. The number one podcast in Raider Nation. Tune in every week wherever podcasts are found. Call in and leave a message to be played on air at 408-909-PJFF. This episode brought to you by DC4L Custom Tees. Check them out at DC4LCustomTees.com. It's time to pillage another podcast. I'm your host, Kenny Stapler. What's good, Che? Oh, brother. You already know, man. Your belly full? My belly's very full, man. First of all, your boy over here hooked it up with some oxtail right before the show. We were down there throwing throwing down. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I had, I had previously ate. Before I came out here, so <laughs> there wasn't a whole lot of space. But you said there was going to be some oxtails. I said, Fuck it, I'll find room. Oxtails a special occasion. I'll, I will find room for this oxtail, <laughs> dog. Okay, and it was on point, man. It was pretty good. Hell yeah, it was dog. My, my first time making oxtail. That shit's good, man. That was, shit was delicious. That was like a four hour cook on that. Oh yeah, you could tell it was good. That's that's time and love and patience right there, man. Lots of love. I appreciate it, man. Lots of love. Damn. Let's see what we got here because uh, this beer is getting warm. <laughs> so let's run through this. There you go. <laughs> <coughs> Quick update on the Crow's Nest. If you guys haven't tuned in yet, make sure you tune into the Crow's Nest podcast. That's right. Uh, it's not for the faint of heart. I will tell you that. We will be recording that uh, immediately after this episode. Mm-hmm. Episode nine tonight, we'll be talking about a five-year-old who brought 24 vials of crack to preschool. Damn. A Danish politician who went to Pornhub looking for votes. And uh, <laughs> smart man, he's smart. There's a lot of people on there. <laughs> <laughs> there is, bro. There's a lot of people on there, man. The whole world's on porn, uh, bro. Hey, man. Well, at least a certain constituent- constituency. <laughs> uh, and a gentleman apparently who uh, he had, a, he had an ear itch, Ugh. and they found out there was a spider making a nest in that ear canal. Yeah. Mm. So we'll talk about all that. Yeah. Uh, and more. And more. Uh, unfortunately, Paulie won't be with us tonight, so me and Che are just going to riff, 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 riff. Hey, man, so this is going to be more of this right here. This one-two punch right here. The, the, uh, bam, bam. That one-two. That good one-two. <laughs> uh, again, the uh, Crow's Nest available across all platforms, such as the Pillaging Podcast that you're listening to now. And a reminder for those of you on Android, like myself, uh, Apple Podcasts now available on the web and Android also. So if you like that interface, you've seen your friend with it, you can get it too, but... I roll a Stitcher. That's my uh, weapon of choice. And I know, Che, you're on the Apple, Apple Podcast. Yeah, right? I'm on the Apple Podcast, man. I mean, it, make, it makes sense. I have an iPhone, so the the little icon is already placed on my phone. All I have to do is hit the, that podcast button. Yeah. There it is, man. It's, it's, it's all there. A, it's a nice app. And in fact, you've been listening to the show on iTunes. I uh, suggest you switch over to Apple Podcasts because I think podcasts might be disappearing from iTunes soon. And I've been hearing that the iTunes podcast, it's a little bit buggy on there with the updating. So hmm. definitely Apple Podcasts is the way to go if you got an Apple phone. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Make sure you follow the whole crew uh, on Twitter, uh, at Kenny Stapler, at Che underscore PJ4F, and That's at right. KaneMT6, uh, as well as at Pillaging Pod. We changed our handle up a little while ago. It's a little bit easier to find. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Trying to get everything, you know. On the same page, man. I'm trying to keep it funky for you. Keep it concise. Yeah. Um, <laughs> tonight's guest on the show is going to be Matt Schneidman. Yeah. You know him well from the MercuryNews.com. He's been on the show a couple times. Yes, he is. We like Matt. We ran into Matt over at the Ricky's John Gruden Extravaganza, <laughs> uh, the Khalil Macapalooza, as some people like to refer to it <laughs> as. Um, yeah, that was a nice celebration out there. Um, I'll give Matt a pass for wearing a red wool jacket on an 80 degree day. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I won't. I'm not. I'm going to take him to the test for that tonight. <laughs> and Matt will be running the two-minute drill tonight, so stay tuned for that. That's right. Um, shout out to everyone that's given donations. We got a little sp- something special for you on the video stream. So if you've donated to the show but you haven't watched the stream, well, now you got a reason to because you're going to see your name yeah. in print on that video. S- stay stream. tuned, man. Stay tuned. Stay don't tuned. don't leave early. Mm-mm. Don't leave early. Stay to the end. Because you might miss it. <laughs> yeah, don't leave your seats, bro. <laughs> we might beat the Steelers. You just don't know. There you go. Uh, there I, you I, go. I mentioned our uh, our uh, podcasting apps. Um, hey, look, if you don't listen to a lot of podcasts, but you listen to this one, definitely download the Pillaging Podcast app. Everything you need oh, yeah. in one app. It's free on your Android and your Apple phone. Um, you can get the website. You can, get, you can call in straight from the app. And... Uh, yeah, I think we're actually going to open phone lines tonight because it's pretty light. It's pretty light. Hey, man. 
Yeah. Sounds good to me. Let's open some phone lines. We'll do that after the break. After uh, we talk to Matt, uh, we'll open phone lines, talk to you guys. Uh, also, a reminder, quick reminder, make sure you purchase some merchandise. Um, you can go to OneNationFanWare.com. Uh, Johnny's doing something real special over there with some uh, authentic champion jerseys. Yeah. Um, they're real fresh. You got the One Nation logo on there, and you can customize them. You get the number of your choice, the color of your choice. Available only in white and black or black and white <laughs> with a touch of silver. Yeah. Real fresh. Those are fresh, right? Yeah, they're dope, man. Sort they're dope. Got to work on my gun so I can wear one. Right. <laughs> Do some damn push-ups. <laughs> Do some damn push-ups at the break, man. You got to get into <laughs> the, that beach mode, man. So you wear one of them jerseys out to the beach. Um, so you can find all that over at OneNationFanWare.com. And if you want some pillaging app, uh, sorry, sorry, pillaging gear, um, head over to dc4lcustomtees.com. All the pillaging gear is available over at dc4lcustomtees.com. Right. The One Nation fan wear stuff, man, that's just some real fresh uh, street style Raider gear. You definitely want to check that out. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, man. You, you ready to get into it? Let's do it, man. All right. Let's, let's get into it. Oh, yeah. You guys already know what time it is. What time is it? It's Chelas Conche time, dog. Oh, what's up, King? What's oh, yeah. This. Let me take a sip real quick. First off, you gave me the Freddy Krueger glass. I got I got the Jason. I know. Mm-hmm. I, I kind of mixed things up, huh? It's all good. My bad. It's My bad. Hold, <laughs> I wasn't hold. really paying attention, man. I was just like, they're all horror. They're all horror <laughs> fucking, uh, pint glasses. It's all good. Um, but your boy has a collection of of, of horror themed pint uh, pint glasses, man. Inside, so, I got a, I got a collection of horror themed everything. Bro. Yeah, you do. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> this is true. Anyways, we're getting off topic here. Yeah. Today, we're we're going we're we're revisiting the same company that we that we shouted out last week. Man. OG man, the we're, OG. we're going with that Rogue Brewing Company. Okay, mm. and we got this bad boy here. This is the Fresh Roast. And we got a few on deck for the night, so uh, stay tuned because there'll probably be a second Chelas con Che tonight. And tune into the Crow's Nest to hear what else we have. So this fresh roast, it's an ale brewed with freshly roasted mm-hmm. Rogue Farms malts. And that's right. Rogue grows their own malts. Yeah. Yeah, man. Everything so, that goes into their beer, they grow themselves. Absolutely. Everything. Absolutely, man. They, they, hey. There's a reason why we're drinking their beer because it's delicious and they know what they're doing. Yeah. But as you can see, this is a nice brown ale, and it's got that roasted malt flavor to it. Mm-hmm. It's not too strong. It's about a five point seven, I believe. Yeah, no. Let me check it real quick. Yeah, five point seven. Um, yeah, the IBUs are low, thirty seven. So it's a smooth drinker. Super smooth. It doesn't it's a smooth drinker. It doesn't drink as heavy as it looks. Not no. at all. Not no. at all. In fact, the color is surprising. Um, when I poured it out, it had a nice head on it too. Yeah. Nice, nice, kind of like almost like a stout would, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's good, man. Really mm-hmm. delicious. I, you know, I not, ain't mad at it at all. Not creamy. It's crisp. Mm-hmm. Definitely crisp. Don't let the color fool you. If you're not a dark it's beer sharp. drinker, you might like. This. If you like coffee, you're gonna like this. Yeah, it definitely has a coffee note on it, right? Yeah, it does. That roast does. is in there. You can taste mm-hmm. the roast. The roast of malt is. It's definitely got a coffee feel to it. It's like a. It's like an espresso, bro. Mm-hmm. That's what it tastes like. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. I'm sure if we read this label, we would we would find out that there's something something along those lines in there. Um, but hey, man, that's not what I'm here for. I'm just here to drink drink these and tell yeah. you that they're good or not, yeah. and it's good. It's good. <laughs> it's, it's good. good. It's real good. Hey, it's shout out good. to Rogue for always having a fire fire. Hell yeah, man! Pants, they, and they do. They got some good dope designs that's on a, there. That's a classy looking it's bottle. Like a ro- the, the, that's that that malt. On fire right there. It's roasting right there. Yeah. Shout out to Rogue, man, because the first, I think the first craft beer I drank was a Rogue. I, t- I think I told that story. Oh, it was a Dead Guy Ale. Cause yeah. The bottle caught my attention. I still have that bottle. It was a limited edition glow in the dark release. That's what's up. I got it somewhere probably buried in my college junk. <laughs> um, yeah, but you do. I stuck with Rogue, and then they, they really started releasing heavy down here the, the Shakespeare Old Mill Stout. Mm-hmm. Which we actually we're in a review tonight. Yeah, that's an oldie that has been around for a while. Man, uh, you leaking information, man. Ah, <laughs> ah, how dare me? You're leaking information. That may or may not show up on this show or the crow's nest. <laughs> There's a third beer, and we will not mention uh, the dead guy ale. Obviously, the Chef Morimoto soba ale that's the one i haven't tried yet man it's a perfect, perfect i mean there's a lot that i haven't tried yet but yeah. that's that's one that i really want to try that i haven't tried yet. that's that's a perfect summer ale it's light it's crisp it tastes a lot like a sapporo just more ricey it's got more of a, a okay more flavor to it okay um okay. what else filtered they got? unfiltered 
is filtered. Yeah, okay. it's 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 a very clear beer. Uh, they also have the uh, the yellow snow ale, which I haven't seen in a while. That's a good one. And they had a, a I think a jalapeno one. They had a chili beer. That was probably the best chili beer I've ever had. Okay, like definitely a kick on it and uh, real real clean. Just That's real what's clean. Up. Yeah, just I can go on and on, but Rogue man, all American ale, all of that everything's great. Definitely try Rogue. They're from where? Portland. I believe so. Yeah, Portland. yeah they're they're up in that area. Yeah, up Portland's in that area heavy, man. Sure. Portland and San Diego, two great brew towns. Let's see, we don't for sure. Let's see, let's see. Newport, Newport. They're from Newport, Oregon. Newport, Oregon. Yeah. All right, so I knew they were up there. Yeah, yeah. The Northwest, and then uh, that that San Diego brewer. San Diego was a big brew town. Oh hell yeah! Which is no hell surprise yeah. you went to college there, dude. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a shocker, dude. Well, surprise! Come on now. Yeah. Hey, uh, makes all kinds of sense now, right? <laughs> Here I am. Um. Hey, shout out to Kane. Shout out to Kane. I just see he hit the, the, yeah, the chat. Yeah. So we'll be getting that Kane in a little bit. Uh, but first off and foremost, <laughs> time to hit you with some quick hits. That's right. Quick hits. Hit them. Qu- quick hits. <laughs> Congratulations to Derek and Heather Carr on the birth of their third son, Deacon that's right. Carr. That's right. And that's all I got to say about that. No. Yeah. Congratulations. Nothing else to say. Hey, Carr stays producing in the offseason. <laughs> so I'm saying, dude. He does. Completions everywhere. He's completing a lot. Hey, everyone gets the ball. He's spreading it around. He's getting it done, man. Uh, <laughs> props to you, though. <laughs> uh, Oakland has added several noted scouts to its organization. Sports Illustrated's Albert Breer writes, <clears throat> among those to make the trek to the Bay Area include Patriots, DeJuan Daniels, the Eagles, Dwayne Joseph, and the Cowboys, uh, Walt Juliff and Jim Abrams. So that scouting room starting to fill back up again. There you go. And uh, who's the dude? Uh, he's, he's the only scout that, that was left over. Uh, his dad is the boxing guy. Shit, what's his name? It's a, That's a Ted, Teddy Atlas, man. Yeah, Teddy Atlas Jr., bro. Teddy Atlas Jr., man. Yeah. You that know, ain't that crazy, though. It's crazy, it's crazy. It, but it's, when I read that, I was like, wait a minute. Is that the Teddy Atlas? And I looked it up, <laughs> and... Not only did I find out it was his son, but I was reminded of the fact the last time I'd seen Teddy Atlas doing like a promo, yeah. he was wearing a Raiders shirt. Okay. He's yeah, wearing, yeah, that's right. He, you remember? The, yeah, the, I saw the, that too. I the saw support that too. the troop shirt. And it turns out, yeah, him and his dad have been big Raider fans since day one. So That's what's up. Yeah, they remain with the organization. That's cool. It is that's cool. cool, man. I like Teddy Atlas, bro. I like that, dude. Teddy Atlas is funny, man. He's, <laughs> he's a fucking interesting motherfucker, right? <laughs> he's really interesting, bro. He's, he gets after it, dog, when he's talking about boxing, man. He, it looks like he might punch you just to prove a point. <laughs> like, he hits you like this, but not like this hard, but like this hard. Like, uh-uh. <laughs> you're like, I get it, damn. Bah! Damn. T- you throw the jab. <laughs> so he's like, he's like, ah. Speaking of which, did you see that Deontay Wilder knockout? Yeah, I did, Bro. man. That guy went to sleep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that guy woke up in another town, dog. Dude, his ears were twerking, bro. Bro, <laughs> he know where he was, bro. His ears were twerking. His eyes open. He's like, what? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> now, nah, man, I knew I knew that short was that fight wasn't going to be very long, dude. I knew that 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 fight was going to be short, man. Um. Dominic Brazil is not <laughs> no. He's not championship calib- caliber fighter, man. He's not um he fights decent. Mm-hmm. Um but anytime that I've seen him fight in anything that's like worthwhile, he doesn't look that great. And against a guy like you know, Deontay Wilder, Dude, he's with that machine. one hitter quitter, bro. Uh. <laughs> he got that one hitter <laughs> quitter, bro. That punch looks like the spike that they 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 use on the cows, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the spike that just <laughs> somehow Damn, man. And did you hear it? You could hear that. <laughs> he just walked away. He heard He heard the, He heard. heard the shot himself. He's like, I'm walking away now. Bro, I I'm heard done, it. I'm done here. I heard it before I changed the channel. <laughs> That's how strong that punch was. I was watching the Warriors game, and I was like, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> no, bro. That shit changed the channel itself, bro. Yeah, it so, was like, <laughs> you, yeah. I'm out. I'm like, Whoa. I was like, Slapping the side of my TV. What happened, man? <laughs> <laughs> I was watching the Warriors game just a minute ago. I haven't got out of my seat to change the channel in years. <laughs> it happened happened last night. Oh, man. Yeah, I know you're a big box. Hell this, yeah. is, this is a pillaging podcast. So we, we talk more about that on the Crow's Nest. Oh, yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bobby said, uh, what did Bobby say? Oh, he said, uh, I need to curl some chelas to work on my guns. Hey, it might be working, Bobby, but it's not helping my ponce. <laughs> it's not happening to points at all but this beer is welcome though it's been a long ass day I, I got up early today i got up at like 5 a.m 
to roll out to uh, Viva Calle in San Jose street yeah. street event. Yeah, uh, your boy here was a uh, stage manager along with uh, the homie Jules out there. That's what's up? And we 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 I rolled up. It was storming Norman outside, bro. Yeah, man. It was raining cats and cats <laughs> and bigger cats. <laughs> I parked in a spot that had chickens and roosters walking around wild. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even lying, bro. I got out of my car. I heard a rooster. I was like, what's that? I turned around. There was right there. I was like, bro, what are you doing here? He looked at you like this. <laughs> yeah, he did. That was that junkie rooster, dog. He'd been up all night. Oh, man. I was like, well, you crow. It's, bro, it's 7 a.m. We're awake. We get it. The sun's up. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> uh, it was dumping out there. My boss, uh, shout out to my boss, man. He's a radio yeah. fan too. He called that because it cleared up and started dumping again. We had generator out there. We had the whole you know DJ console. We had the mics, everything live. Two big bass cabs, and yeah. I was just like, bro, this is not cool. Someone's fitting to die right now. Yeah. DJ, no, it was no joke, bro. You sent me that picture. I was like, why? Yeah, <laughs> why are you guys out there right now, dog? <laughs> What are we trying to prove right now? And we had Watts Radar on last week. We had DJ Watts in the parking lot this week. Damn, all right. DJ Voltage, bro. Yeah, yeah no shit. Uh. <laughs> Man, that's all, electric. That's, that's all the quick hits I got, bro. That's hey, it. You tap, said it was going to be short. Tap, let me see. Hold on. <laughs> no, nothing's that's coming it. out, bro. That's it. We squeeze the tube dry. It's going to be a long off season, folks. It is, man. But ride with us. But hey, listen. Mm. As long as our guys stay out of the news for all the right reasons, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Then we're good, right? Yeah. They're actually kind of good that the, the news is, is you know, slow. Because, mm-hmm. you know, they don't be putting out them positive stories about the Raiders. No. Nah. You know? Mm-hmm. That's not what they like. Mm-hmm. They don't like that. Mm-hmm. They want to see that negativity, bro. <laughs> so if you ain't hearing anything, mm-hmm. then we're all right. Let me ask you a question just on, yeah. the, on the fly right now. I was going to ask you, who's your, who's your favorite Non Raider football player, past or present, but I want to go down that road. I want to ask you, out of Raider players all time, your favorite like unheralded Raider player, the guy that maybe didn't get enough shine. Oh just man, that, just that cutty dude. What's one of those guys? Damn, that you really like? Let me think, man. Give me one or two, whatever comes to your mind. Let me think. Someone that maybe didn't get the shot, maybe he had to exit early because of injury. Maybe uh, you know, you just liked his 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 style. You know, above substance. You know, he played well, but never really lit up the box score. Who was it, man? Let me. I, I mean, I'm kind of putting you. There on was the a spot. few. There was a few guys. There was a few guys. Um, but uh, ah, man, I gotta say, shout out to Nyron Ball, bro. Yeah, man, Is, he's still in the coma. Yeah, Is he still in the coma? I think so, dude. No, yeah, man. I, I hope. So. I hope he comes out. Right. Uh, that's Trent Brown's boy, right? Yeah. 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 So I, I hope he comes out of that, man. Um, and I, like you say, he was he was dope when he was when he was around, bro. He was the answer that we were looking for, bro. Yeah, yeah. When we plugged him in, the tight end position got quiet mm. for for the, for mm. a, you know opposing. You teams. said if he, you you said it too when he got injured and he and he was kind of in and out in and out. You're like if he ever gets healthy, I think he's the answer. Yeah. Unfortunately for him, man, he didn't get healthy and he's his health has just been downhill since yeah. then, man. And now we're just praying for the answer for yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Just on to the real, just to be able, be okay, you know, just to be healthy, not football wise, just life wise, right? Yeah. So um, shout out to Ball. Yeah, shout out to him. But you know what, man? Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I mean, I liked I liked a lot of lot of dudes that were kind of like low key. Mm-hmm. Um, where where'd you end up on Jacoby Ford, man? Where'd you end up on him? He was like a fan favorite there for me. Jacoby Ford was was a fan favorite because he always like you know he gave us something to be excited for. Well, he right? beat the Chiefs, bro, when we needed the, the most. There you right? go. But then he just had them big plays, right? They didn't happen all the time. No. But when he did, they were just like, "Whoa, yeah, Jacoby Ford's gonna do something, man!" Yeah. Right? So we we're all on his on his. Uh, Where's he at now? I don't know. He probably <laughs> probably owns a Ford dealership, right? <laughs> Come on down to Jacoby Ford, right? <laughs> <laughs> a Ford dealership, bro. Why does he have to sell Fords? Because <laughs> his dog just does. You're not going to shop it. a Jacoby Ford Toyota. <laughs> man, that's oh, way, that's true. I guess that's right? way too confusing, that's bro. True, right? Jacoby Ford, Ford. <laughs> Come on down to Jacoby Ford, Ford. <laughs> oh man, you know who no, else? You know what? Uh, uh, you know what? I got give. I'll give a shout out to Stuart Schweiger, though. Schweiger, man. Schweiger was a was that gritty white boy, right? That's mm-hmm. just kind of like. You're like, whoa, hey man! You kind of thought that he might be able to develop into something like, um, 
I don't know, kind of like Lynch, you know, was for Tampa Bay. You're like, there's there was little little spots here and there that maybe you're like, wow, maybe he's gonna develop into something like that, but it just never came came through. And if you listened in to uh to the Wolf Pack, the last I think the last episode that they had before they uh they parted ways, uh, they had him on, they had him on, and they were talking to him about that. He said, you know, it was kind of coaching. They kind of killed that. Oh, he, yeah. said, he said yeah. that that team was better than it actually, you know, produced. Mm-hmm. He was like, there, we should have won more games. Bro, we've heard that story a few I know. times. I know. I've heard that a lot. We've times. heard that a lot. But, hey, man. You know who was my dude? And I won't say he was unheralded. We loved him. He he did well. Uh, led the team in total yardage. Um, I think touchdowns, too. Was Michael Bush, man. Michael Bush was dope, too, man. I wish we could have ro- ro- rode with him a little that bit That was longer. one of those guys that I thought was going to be our guy. He for was, a while. He was a new Wheatley when we had mm-hmm. him, right? He was, I thought he was gonna yeah. be our guy for a while. I mean that that one year that he um and he's been in our in our uh he's been in the in the in the uh the two minute drill in the questions, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh he's been one of the answers. Might be tonight. Um, Might be tonight. <laughs> there you go, there you go. Um <laughs> uh, Kane said Derek Gibson and Michael Huff, bro. Um, those are good ones too, man. Those are good cutty players. Good. Yeah, cutty players, Gibson for sure. Huff, man, Huff is, Huff's kind of like that polarizing Raider, bro. But you got to say, uh, you know, when we, when we filled that ten man defense mm-hmm. right after Allen passed away, mm-hmm. Huff sealed that game against the Texans. I was that's a, that's a spotlight on Huff right there. Uh, who else, man? Who else? Who else? Who else? Justin Fargus, Yayo yeah, says, shout out to Justin Fargus. We rode with Fargus for a while, man. Hell yeah, definitely not a sleeper. Uh, London Raider said Eddie Anderson. Um, yeah, man. Yeah. yeah what yeah. about uh? uh- <laughs> What about your boy, uh, Anthony Dorsett, man? Oh, shit, man. <laughs> nah. Hey, man, he had that athleticism, right? You're like, man, if you could just get his shit together, man, you could be good. <laughs> what about your boy, Andrew Walter? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, man. I'm gonna make- <sighs> Shout out to everybody, man. Shout out to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't going to put you down. We ain't going to put you on blast no more, man. Shout out to... Uh, shout- Let bygones be bygones, man. Sh- shout out to John Ritchie, dog. John Ritchie was the shit, Fuck but I don't, I don't even know. see when I think Cuddy player, I think of like that guy that just didn't always get playing time. Yeah, John Ritchie was in there all the time, uh, bleeding all the time. and all right, just every time forehead bleeding, those horns that he had on his forehead <laughs> yeah. just always bleeding. Yeah, um, so I wouldn't call him a Cuddy player because he got shit done. Yeah, he was out there. Yeah, I mean he what he led? Did he lead, lead us in receiving one time? Yeah, one receptions. That's crazy. Not bro. not yards, but fullback. receptions. Yeah, he's a fullback. He's a fullback. <laughs> John Gruden, man. Yeah. Might we see some more fullback action this year? I don't know. We didn't see nothing in Keith Smith last year, bro. Well, I mean, we brought him over because he was supposed to be that that fullback that John likes, right? But as we saw, we dra- we got one right in the yeah. free agents, right? Yeah. Undrafted free agents. You know what? Speaking of uh, Cuddy players, recently, bro, um, Olawale, bro. There you go. Yeah, Olawale's a good one, though. Rock Cartwright, dog. Huh? Rock. <laughs> Yo, you team captain, bro. Special Rock team captain. Right. Yeah. Rock, That's right. Rock Cartwright right, calling coin tosses since 2000 and whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah. Oh, bro. Huh. What about uh oh, god damn, why I lose I lost his name right now. Um what about uh damn. Mm. I just lost his name, man. Um shit. God damn it. Dude, uh, dude, dude, wide receiver number 17, Moore. Oh, Daenerys Moore? Daener- Daenerys Moore, bro. Oh, there goes that man again. Bro, remember? Yeah. I yeah. thought that was, I thought he was going to, like, he was going to be a steal. Dog. Remember? Because we got, when did we, did we get him undrafted or did he come like super late in the draft? I want to say undrafted. I want to say undrafted. I want to say undrafted yeah. too, but he had that big season. Yeah. We're like, oh shit. I remember when he, uh, that game it was the latest, latest kickoff ever, right? Against mm. the Chargers on Thursday night. Mm. That was a good game for him too. Yeah, yeah him, him and Jacoby Ford stock were rising at like the he same had, time. Yeah, he had a huge season, man. And then mm-hmm. the next season, he had like all this expectation. Mm-hmm. Didn't go well. Yeah. And then the following season just fell off hard. Like, I don't even think he got to start. Nah. And then the, he got uh, real timid. He yeah. got real timid. Yeah, something got in his, in his head, bro. Because yeah. he was, perf- when he was like confident, that, mm-hmm. that one season, he got really confident, dog. And he was, everything was working. All right, those catches, man. He had yeah. like diving catches over two people in the end zone. Yeah, ah, man, Daenerys Moore, man. 
Shout Wish out. you would have panned out, bro. Shout out to your boy Ron Curry, dog. <laughs> Ronald Curry, dog. That yeah. touched out in the back of the end zone in the yeah. snow. They had that uh, framed in, in Oakland headquarters yeah. for a while. Yeah. I don't know if it's still up there. I think Tom Keeble might have punched it off the wall. <laughs> <laughs> He's a like, fuck Ronald Curry, dog. <laughs> I was like, yo, Tom, you chill, bro. Yeah, these guys are saying Zach Crockett. Sean Grogan, Zach Crockett was not cutty, bro. He was like the go-to touchdown guy. Yeah, he was the man. I mean, of course, Zach Crockett's a guy, man, but he's not. He wasn't cutty at all. He was the guy that was expected to score every single time he was out there. Yeah. Zach Miller. Zach Miller. Kirk Morrison. Kirk Morrison was the leader of the defense, though, so yeah. I wouldn't call him cutty. No. But sh- um, shout out to everybody, like yeah. you said, dog. Yeah. Shout out to everyone. Wait, who was, uh, who was the other linebacker at that time? Napoleon Harris. Was it Napoleon oh. Harris with Kirk Morrison? Oh, at that time? Uh, shoot. Um... Cause I thought they were dope. No, it wasn't him. It was the outside linebacker, Cam. No, 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 oh, no. Cam Wimbley. No. Remember they had this little later. thing going. That they were later. talking about uh, they they even did like this little spoof piece. I think it was like the law offices of something in Morrison or something like that. Oh yeah, yeah. You remember yeah. that? Yeah. I forget, man. I forget. I don't know. I was gonna look it up, but I mean, that's just gonna take. It's all long. good. It's all good. We've, we've drawn this on long enough. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Oh, uh, Pete, Pete got you. Thomas Howard, bro. There you go. Yeah. There you go. There shout you go. Out, Thomas out to Howard. Pete, That's right, Pete. Pete's my cutty player, bro. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> all the all the pillagers are our cutty players, bro. Look yeah. at it, man. Look at this. We got cutty players all, all up and down this. Shit, we cutty players, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what do you say, man? Let's take a break. Let's get Matt on the phone. Let's do that. Nice and early here. Uh, Hell yeah. And uh, we'll be right back. Oh, yeah. We out you. Peace. All right, and we're back on the air with Matt Schneidman. Matt, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me, guys. Great to be back. Yeah, no problem. Why don't you let our listeners know where they can find you online and who you're writing for these days? Yeah, same uh, Bay Area News Group, Mercury News, just at Matt Schneidman is where I'm at all over the place. Good stuff. Good stuff, Matt. Um, it's been a while since we've had you on the show. I think the last time I saw you was over there at Ricky's. You were wearing a, a red wool jacket on a very warm day. <laughs> But you were looking. I don't remember what I was wearing that day. That's pretty impressive. (laughs) (laughs) Well, man, you were the only one in a red jacket and a Sea Raider fan, so that stuck out in my mind. But (laughs) you're looking very dapper, so I gotta 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 give you props on that, man. Um, But yeah, it's always good having you on the show. Let's get right to it, brother. It's a slow news week right now, so we're gonna kind of do a deep dive on some of the stuff that you've written recently. Uh, Lastly, I read a story from you on Max Crosby. you talked a little bit about Max, where he came from, kind of his story going up through college. And again, let me reset this for our listeners who maybe haven't heard you in the past or maybe haven't read your work. But one thing I really like about Mr. Scheidman's work is it's not just it's, it's not just regurgitated football talk. Right. Uh, Matt's really about the story, and, and I think he tells a good story. Yeah. It really caught my attention from the day that you jumped on the Bay Area news group scene, and uh, we appreciate that. But you, you dug deep on Max Crosby um, after doing all the research – Regarding the fourth rounder, what was your what was your biggest takeaways regarding Max Crosby? Uh, it, it was really interesting how um, when he first got to Eastern Michigan, he weighed about 210 pounds, and, and that was in June of 2015, I believe. Just a couple months prior, his college head, head coach, Chris Creighton, was telling me he watched Crosby play his senior season of high school basketball around 250 pounds. Hmm. And a little bit of that was baby fat because Max told me that he went through a growth spurt going into his senior year of high school. So he was trying to get rid of some of that baby fat um, and then wanted to add it back as muscle at Eastern Michigan. But he lost too much, not for any you know strange reason. It was just you know too much working out. It got a little out of hand. So he really had to build back up about 40 pounds of muscle um, throughout his college career. And I think that's the biggest takeaway because – that really applies to what he's doing now and, and what the Raiders are going to ask him to do. The big thing Mike Mayock and John Gruden have said about him is they're going to put him in the weight room with Deuce Gruden and he really has to put a lot more muscle on if he wants uh, to have an effect as a pass rusher 
in this league. And right now he's around 250, 255, I believe. Uh, so if he can put on some, some significant muscle on top of that, like he proved he could do in college, I think uh, he'll be a nice piece there for the Raiders. Good stuff. Now, assuming he does so, uh, with Key being the primary rusher opposite Cleveland, can Max compete for that role? I mean, Key is seen as more of a third down rusher. I, I know he, he he played every down last year for the most part, but I think ideally Key's probably a third down guy. Max probably projecting towards that same role as well. But can either Key or Max maybe develop into an early down rusher? And if not, who gets the nod in that spot? Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I definitely think Key is going to be given the first go at it. Um, I think the Raiders feel they really have untapped potential in him. If they can get him to finish plays and finish sacks, they think he could have had double digits last year. He only had one. So um, Key's going to get the first go at it. Uh, like you guys know, they think Farrell is a three-down guy. So I think it'll be Cleland and Arden on the edge to begin. And, and Crosby, I think, will start off and maybe last his rookie season as really just a third round, uh, third down, I should say. Uh, situational pass rusher and in talking to people around him they really emphasize his run stopping abilities off the edge too and that's something Arden Key struggled with uh, setting an edge uh, against the run last year the Raiders everyone talks about how bad they were rushing the passer they were 25th in the league run, uh, defending the run they they allowed um, I believe it was 101.8 rushing yards per game or something like that it, it was not good yeah. so um They'll need Crosby to help against the run, too. I don't think he'll, you know, jump into that starter's role this season. At least that's my guess. But I, I do think he'll play a nice complimentary role. Okay. Looking forward to seeing Max on there. Now, consider, concerning that Max's fate lies in Deuce's hands, which is uh, better than a deuce lying in Max's hands, right? Uh, uh, given K KO's recent comments regarding the team's strength and conditioning inefficiencies, is this at all concerning – or do you think that's just smoke in the air with KO? Um, what do you see? I mean, you, you get a better look at this than we do out here. Is this something to be concerned about, or is this just kind of um, the rumor mill? I don't think so. I mean, it, it, like you guys said, it's a slow news week. It's the dog days of the off season. There's always going to be uh, stuff to fill the space, and I know what KO said, and who knows? I'm not going to you know assume why he said that. Maybe it's true. Maybe it's just he was a little um, upset that the Raiders traded him and, and didn't think he was worth the money. I don't know. I'm not going to uh, jump to any conclusions there. But the the thing I will say is, you know, I'll give Deuce the chance to work with Max Crosby, work with the other guys and the whole strength staff. I know it'll look different without Tom Shaw and Kelsey Martinez. Um, and we'll see what they can do. I mean, I don't know. I, I can't sit here and say I know one way or the other whether what KO said is true and whether there were deficiencies on the strength staff. Mm -hmm. um, we still don't know why Tom Shaw was fired. All John Gruden said was it was a personal issue, not personnel, personal. So there was mm -hmm. something there, but we don't know what that was. Um, so I think for now, all we can really do is just trust this new, new uh, strength staff that they'll get the most out of these guys. Yeah. Todd Shaw was talking, talking shit at Hooters is what I heard. That's <laughs> what I heard. Eating too many Gruden wings <laughs> with, without consent. That's a no-no. That's a big no-no. Uh, He's trying to do commercials with the girls, man. Yeah, he also defaced. <laughs> he also defaced the uh, the giant Gruden bobblehead Corona doll. Oh no, man! Yeah, you can't you do that. Can't do that. <laughs> can't do that. Um, so, Matt, <clears throat> a little bit more on this. Uh, 2018 Raiders pass rush left a lot to be desired. That That is an understatement, if anything. The team opted to remedy the situation via the draft rather than going after a vet and free agency. Has enough been done to bolster this position group as far as the edge is concerned? Uh, will we see a significant difference in 2019, or is this going to take some ramp-up time? I think it'll take some time. Um, I don't think you'll see a significant difference I mean, you look at the AFC West, Joey Bosa and Melvin Ingram with the Chargers. Frank Clark just joined the Chiefs along with Chris Jones, who was top five in the league in sacks as a defensive tackle. Then you have Von Miller and Bradley Chubb on the Broncos, and the Raiders have Arden Key and Cleland Furl. I mean, still by far the worst in their division, at least on paper. Mm -hmm. um, I still do think they'll be in the bottom half of the league, but there's only one way you can go after last season, and that's up. And I think 
you know, I expect them to do that. I expect Key to get stronger and be able to finish some of those plays. Uh, I'd expect Furl to come in and help out. Uh, maybe even Crosby, Benson, Mayoa, maybe could provide some situational third down pass rushing mm -hmm. this year. Um, but I do think, especially since your top two guys are unproven young guys in their first and second years in the league, respectively, it will be a little bit more of a building process and we shouldn't expect immediate results just yet. And that's fair enough. And, and let's not underestimate the middle, too. I think Mohurst is going to get a lot better this year. Right. I think we get some pass rush up the middle this year. So what was the total last year? It was like 13 sacks, right, for the entire so. team? Yeah. Yeah. So what, what would you 13, please... Yeah. Yeah. That was, yeah, that was the fewest in a single season for any team in 10 years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, what would you place the over-under on for 2019? If you had to bet, if you had to put money on it, Matt, where would you put that? Uh, six and a half. If I was the odds maker, I would put it at six and a half and I would take, I've been saying seven and nine, but I also am now starting to feel six and 10 just because of how hard their schedule is more than anything. I definitely think they have a better roster on both sides of the ball, but they have the hardest schedule in the NFL and the NFL totally screwed them over before they go to Vegas. I mean, that weeks two through eight, I believe it is. Not, I don't think it's in this order. I'm not looking at the schedule right now, but it's hosting the Chiefs. Then they have away games at the Vikings, Bears in London, Packers, Texans, and Colts. It's like the hardest stretch possible. So mm -hmm. um, they could very easily start 1-6, and 2-5, and five, and then that's just an uphill battle for the rest of the season. Yeah, and then I think they come back for two games, and one of those two games, I believe, is Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. So it's, I mean, that's no gimme at home, you know, as far, as, in terms of no, their defense. You know, you, know. you know what happened last time Nick Foles visited the Coliseum. It ah, was not pretty. Ah, <laughs> ah, well, you got to bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> no, no that's, that's real. That's real. Now, in terms of team sacks over under, what would you put that? I mean, last year at 13, what's your over under for this year? Team sacks. We'll go um, 23. I'll give them 23 because, remember, 23 still would have put them uh, in last place by a wide margin last year. Mm -hmm. I believe the New York Giants and one other team were tied at second to last with 30. Mm -hmm. So it's not like the Raiders were even close to being 31st in the league. So I'll give them 10 more this year. I'll put it at 23. Wow. You heard that, Raider Nation. Get your pitchforks. And your torch is out. Yeah. You're ready to storm the castle. Yeah. We're not quite there yet. But you know what, Matt? <laughs> it's, it's hard for me to disagree with you. I know a lot of fans are fired up. They see the Cleveland highlights. They want to believe in Max Crosby, the fourth rounder. Arden Key will finish this year. He was so close on so many plays last year. But I think, you know, listening to Matt. Matt now, I'm not going to put you on blast, man. I, I don't mean to do it in that way. But Matt's not a Raiders fan. Matt, Matt's, Matt's a writer. And I think he's very neutral. I think he's a good job of that. He's right in the middle. Um, so coming from you, I like to listen to takes coming from folks outside because we get a little geeked up. We get a little bit over our skis sometimes yeah. as fans. and it, it, it pays to really listen to reason, I think. And 23, that's a fair number. Hey, hopefully we hit the over. But I don't think this is going to be you know revolutionary, right? It's going to be a slow burn, and we're working towards it. Um, that's it, man. That's it. So you recently wrote about also Trent Brown being the highest paid offensive lineman despite his right tackle assignment. It seems to me the top free agent offensive lineman becomes the highest paid lineman every year, regardless of position. Can you back me up on this? Explain to our listeners why Brown's de designation at right tackle is not a misstep and why he can still earn his keep despite not protecting the QB's blind side in the AFC West. Yeah, I mean, if you just look, I, I mean, I just listed some of the pass rushers in the AFC West. I think Von Miller uh, lines up against the right tackle a vast majority of snaps that he's on the field for. Right. So right. Um, Von Miller, while Bradley Chubb is a really good pass rusher, Von Miller is arguably the best in the league, and he's a surefire first ballot Hall of Famer. So Trent Brown will be blocking him, and I think at this point you'd rather Trent Brown block Von Miller than Colton Miller. So um, that's one reason why Raiders fans shouldn't read too much into it. Also, Chargers, Joey Bosa and Melvin Ingram, pick your poison. I mean, both of those guys can wreak absolute havoc. Mm -hmm. So it's not like Trent Brown playing on the left side will make that much of a difference. Yet it's technically Derek Carr's blind side, and you probably want to have a little more time if someone's coming from behind him. But uh, in the end, it's not that big of a difference. And, I mean, we'll see what the Chiefs do in terms of lining up Frank Clark. But 
they're the Kansas City Chiefs. They're always going to find another guy to rush off the edge. So while a lot has been made, and I certainly have have fueled this fire a little bit, that's my own fault. Um, but I think especially in the AFC West, mm-hmm. left tackle doesn't carry the same weight as it does in other divisions in the NFL just because each team has great pass rushers on both sides of the line. So right. regardless of where Trent Brown plays, He's going to have to play well, so you, you're paying him the money regardless. Mm-hmm. He's going to have to block, and just so happens in the AFC West, on the right side, you're going to still have to block some of the best pass rushers in the NFL. Thank you. Thanks for making that crystal clear. Also, we had Lincoln Kennedy on here about uh, six weeks ago, Somewhere give or there. take. Somewhere around there. And this was kind of before they designated the offensive line positions, before Gruden had come out with all this. And he had called it. He said, I, I think Trent Brown's going to play the right side. In John's system, he likes a big power tackle on the right for the run. You know, for the run and on the left, he likes a guy that's a little bit more agile, a little bit more mobile, protect the blind side. And that's exactly what we see. So between what Lincoln told us and what you told us, I don't think Raider Nation should be mad that Trent Brown's making quote unquote left tackle money on the right tackle side. He was the biggest offensive lineman in free agency. He's going to get paid the top money. That's just the way free agency works every yeah. single year. Watch next year. The big offensive lineman free agent will become the top paid offensive lineman in the Absolutely. NFL. So don't look at the, the paycheck as an earmarker of, of, of where they're going to play and what they should play. Just really, it, it comes down to business, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm hoping Trent Brown can repeat the success he had in New England. I think before that, a career was a little bit rocky, not quite the success he had in New England. So we'll see if he reverts or he stays the same, but I'm feeling good about it. How do you feel about Trent Brown, Matt? Yeah, I think it'll be solid. I know people in the Bay Area know uh, the lack of success he had in San Francisco and kind of the the uh, harsh end to his tenure there getting traded. But um, at the same time, he was the left tackle for the best team in football last year. And he won a championship, played really well in the playoffs. So Mm -hmm. in this league, it's what have you done for me lately? And if Raiders fans take it that way, then, you know, what Trent Brown has done lately is pretty damn good. So I think uh, at least for now, there should be some optimism around him. I, uh, I kind of feel like the bell, Bill Belichick culture isn't one to just rub off on off of a player once right. they leave. It just doesn't just disappear. I look at Bill Belichick mm-hmm. as, as that teacher you had in high school who was like the biggest jerk, right? <laughs> you hated him. You had, you had anxiety walking into class every day. But at the end of the year, you learned something. You were challenged. And years down the, lo- the line, you still hear that, that person's voice in your head. Yeah. And I think Belichick's kind of like that dude. So I'm hoping Trent can bring some of that over here to Oakland. We know, we know John's a big fan of Bill Belichick. So hopefully that, that there's some consistency there and Trent can continue doing what he's doing because we need that help. Brandon Parker, you weren't supposed to start last year. That's why we did not pile on you last year. I think we were one of the few you know, outlets, one of the few – groups of fans just period <laughs> that didn't do so and uh you know right. you, you got in there you took your licks and, and you stood up in your first nfl rookie season but now trent brown's here you can take a rest you can learn from the best you can sit down and uh you you, you can spell this offense in spurts that's what you're assigned for um let's move forward though what's the most intriguing battle going into camp this off season hmm that's a good question let's see I think slot receiver. I think Ooh. while it might not have the highest profile names among camp battles, quote unquote, um, I think Ryan Grant, JJ Nelson, Hunter Renfro are all in play. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm really interested to see who is that third wide receiver behind Antonio Brown and Tyrell Williams. John Gruden obviously likes all of his receivers to be able to play every position. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think, I know Renfro is the popular name because of just the cult hero he was at Clemson, but uh, Grant has produced in recent years. J.J. Nelson is really, really fast. I believe he has the fifth fastest 40 time in combine history. Um, he's, a, he's a deep ball threat. So I think that slot receiver position, and Keelan Doss, the local guy, I mean, oh, you can't yeah. discount him yet. I mean, I think, I think he might be more of an outside guy, but um, that wide receiver room is really, really crowded right now. and. It and is. I think that second starting cornerback spot will be a nice battle. I think um, an outside linebacker spot will be a nice battle. But I think that slot receiver spot, if this offense wants to take it to the next level, is going to be one that has to take attention away from Brown, away from Williams, um, to give Derek Carr uh, another receiver to throw to. And while there may not be high-profile names there with Renfro, Grant, and Nelson – 
I still think it's a very important position battle for this offense. Yeah, it's a tight battle, and all three of those guys definitely strong in what they do as far as the slot receiver goes. And Absolutely. I, I think you're going to see a steady rotation, and someone's going to – I don't think that job gets won in camp. No. I think I think I think Matt I think you called it. I think that's a, that's a tough battle, and I don't think it gets sorted out in camp. I think you're going to see that continue on into the regular season until somebody finally you know entrenches himself as that 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 slot guy. Is that fair, Che? Absolutely, man. I think somebody has to be successful on the field when it counts mm-hmm. for them to really decide this is the guy that we're going to roll with. There's, there's a lot of bullets in that gun, so we'll see what happens. Oh, uh, you you mentioned linebacker right now outside linebacker. I had a question for you. Who's going to wear the green dot on this defense? That's a good question. Um, you know, would it be Vontez Perfect? He knows Paul Gunther's defense really well. He's probably um, going to be. I don't want to say he's going to be the guy starting in the role because so much can change. I mean, mm-hmm. we we thought Derek Johnson was going to be that come save everything middle linebacker last year. They cut him, you know, shortly after they signed him. Right. Uh, if I had to make a guess, I would say perfect just because he has experience in Gunther's defense. Um, they like Markel Lee. He did it at times last year, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. Um, Tiger Whitehead obviously knows the system, but if I had to – Take a guess. I would say it'll be the guy in the middle with in perfect. Yeah, yeah, that'd be my first guess too. Uh, I called the Derek Johnson thing. By the way, I told you guys that was not the answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, um, really quick here, a lot of new faces in silver and black. You know, the draft was deep, had a lot of picks. Uh, free agency was aggressive. I think it got more aggressive once they landed Antonio Brown. I don't think they expected that. Once it did, everything got kicked into overdrive. But no mistakes. This is still a rebuild. And rebuilds have holes. What are some of the biggest holes still remaining on this roster, Matt? Uh, defensive end. I think you need a proven yeah. defensive end, but at yeah. this point, they uh, can't get one of those. Mm. I think, I wouldn't say it's a hole because you have Darren Waller, but I'm mm. just going with un- really unproven guys. Darren Waller played four games for the Raiders last year after coming over from the Ravens practice squad, and he is supposedly their number one tight end now. You know, John Gruden has made it clear Waller will get his time in the spotlight this year, and I think he is he's capable. He's an athletic young guy, um, but I, I would say tight end is another spot. It's hard to pick one on defense, be, or well, I just said defensive end, but yeah. outside of that on defense because you have guys who have been there, and Daryl Worley and Gary on Conley – uh, showed they can both play well at outside corner. LaMarcus Joyner's a proven guy who played in the Super Bowl. Even Carl Joseph, if he starts, he is a guy that has made plays in this league. It, it, you know, going back to the what have you done for me lately, he hasn't done much for the Raiders lately, but he's proven he can do it. And, and the three linebackers in Marshall, Perfect, and Whitehead, even Markel Lee and, and Nicholas Morrow have, have, I wouldn't classify their spots as holes so i would go defensive end and tight end but the raiders have the guys that they're going to use at those positions on the roster now there's nothing you can do so we'll just Mm -hmm. see if uh, those the players at those positions can make me eat my words and and not consider those positions gaping holes uh, a couple weeks into the season yeah, I mean, hope so. I, I think you're right on with defensive end. I think the, I think we're going to see that. I know we're excited about the rookie. I know we're excited about Arden Key's second year. But I think what Matt just said, it's, it's going to come to fruition. You're going to see it play out. It's just still not quite there. The answer isn't quite there yet. With Darren Waller, Waller's like the most intriguing guy for me going into this year. Out of all these cats, he's the most intriguing dude because John's hyping him up. When we saw him last year, I was like, who is this cat? It's tall, lanky, yeah. fast. You only had the, what you know, like you said, the you know very very limited playing time yeah. last year. But uh, they believe in him. He's fast. I still want that that two and one def- tight end, the guy that can block and catch right. and run routes. We we still don't have that yet. I think it kind of tips your hand a little bit uh, when you line up. Um, but you know, it is what it is. We'll see what Darren Waller's got. Very intriguing. You know what else is intriguing, Matt? What's that? <laughs> the two-minute drill. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> now, you may have heard of this. Uh, we talked a little bit All about it. All good things about it, right? All Very good. good. Very good. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you right now. The high score in our two-minute drill is what? 13? 13 out of 20. 13 out of 20. Uh, our low score, I think, was maybe last week, yeah? 
Uh, no, actually, no, not last once. week was uh, I think last last week was a, was an eight, seven, or eight. Yeah, well, I hate to keep picking on our boy, but your boy Austin Gale, <laughs> he was like the first, yeah, and he got six. <laughs> so anywhere between six and thirteen, you gotta beat that. Gotta beat that. There you go. You gotta beat that. I'll tell you what, the pillagers, the fans, doing way better than. The new scribes. <laughs> so, Matt, I need you to step up. And, and the way we do this to keep things fair, because we know a lot of you guys writing on the team. To be fair, you're not Raider historians. You write on the team now. You haven't been riding with the team forever. Now, if I had Jerry McDonald on here, he'd probably go 20 for 20. Right. Right. But that's Jerry. Yeah. Jerry's the OG. That's true. Matt's that's the true. young buck. Young buck. And we like that. We like that. Oh, yeah, we do. Uh, but to keep things fair, <laughs> to keep things fair, it's not all Raiders questions. We got 20 questions coming at you. Uh, every other question is going to be a Raiders question. So you got 10 Raiders questions, one of which is actually worth two points. So a perfect score would technically be 21 out of 20. And we'll signal that to you when you get there. Uh, che, help me write these questions this week. You gave me two categories that are in, in your wheelhouse. Yeah. I pass those off to Che. Those two categories were 2000s era, new millennium era. College basketball and Adam Sandler movies. Yep. Yep. Two categories that just seem to go together for me. Great. They're great categories, man. <laughs> Good categories. Those are great categories. I had fun researching the, that, those two categories. You knocked it out of the park, Jay. Thank you, man. You did. Uh, so we're going to get started. It's going to lead off with the Raiders question. Um, these are relatively new every single week. And uh, there's no time limit. Yeah. Two minute drills, just a, a title. It's, it's not just a, the name. It's not a warning. <laughs> But if you're stalling, I'm going to let you know. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'm going to trust that you're not looking these up on your web browser while we do it. I can hear. No, I'm not. I, all right. I can hear key clicks <laughs> in the background. i got a very keen ear, Matt. Very keen ear. Ask <laughs> sensitive, <laughs> sensitive ears. <laughs> <laughs> Ask anybody. I'm a bit of an audio file. So did I, did I leave anything uncovered, Che? No, nah, man. You got it. I think you covered it all. Are we ready to go? I think so. All right. Matt, are you ready? I am ready. There we go. You didn't sound ready. <laughs> but we're going to do this anyways. <laughs> a little hesitation. A little hesitation. You got the questions up over there, too? No, I don't. Man. You should bring them up because yeah, I, yeah. I might throw some at you, okay. since you since you got in on this. All right, question number one. <clears throat> and we'll try to keep the Raiders question somewhat current for you. Question number one. What Raiders defensive back was the team's first of four picks in the seventh round of the 2017 NFL Draft? So 2017 NFL Draft, seventh round defensive back. Who was it? Oh, man. That was the spring before I started covering the team. But I know that. Oh. You're stalling. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> you got this, man. Just oh, take, my God. I know exactly who this is. It's on the tip of my tongue. Take a deep breath. Get oh Zen. Oh, my God. Get I Zen with know. it, Matt. <laughs> Pat. Correct answer. Shalom Luwani. Oh, I knew that. I knew that. You did know that. I know you knew that. It's the music, okay. man. It's yeah, I know. The music just puts pressure on people. <laughs> Che, man, why don't you take this well, next it question? because he's not on the team anymore. He's not on the team anymore. That is correct. That was not the question. All right. Still loading. Still loading. Question number two. Right in your wheelhouse. College basketball here. Name the final four teams in the 2019 NCAA tournament. The final four teams in the 2019 NCAA tournament were Texas Tech, Virginia, Michigan State mm -hmm. and Auburn. There you go. That's there you go. That's correct. Go, man. One for two, sitting pretty. That's sitting what real I'm talking pretty. about, man. All right, here's a throwback question for you right here. <clears throat> what Pro Bowl quarterback were the number 15 for the Raiders between 1993 and 1996? Pro Bowl quarterback 15. That's before I was born. You guys are prepping me on this one. <laughs> Most of these are current, but not all of them. I'm, oh, is it uh, Hostetler? 
There we go. That is correct. There we go. Did you hear a key click in the background? <laughs> I might have heard an oh, enter man. button. Enter oh, button. Man. Not- yeah, right. <laughs> so I, I, yeah. All right, Shay, why don't you hit him with this next one? Yeah, yeah. All right, man. So here we go to the Adam Sandler category. At the end of the movie Happy Gilmore, Happy is congratulated. Oh, this, is my this, is my favorite, this is my favorite movie of all time. I better get this. Happy is congratulated by three ghosts. Who are they? The three ghosts are the alligator, Chubbs Peterson, and Abe Lincoln. There you go. Damn. <laughs> he even got Chubbs' last name in there, man. I knew that. Yeah. Three, he's three and one right now. Hey, man. He picked the right wheels, man. He, he, he picked his wheelhouse <laughs> real good, man. You know, uh, I, I getting, was... Getting that Christian right is the happiest I've been in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear it. I always, I always tell the guests, be very specific. Yeah, man. This is this is your leverage. There you go, man. Ma- Matt, you did well. So far. So far. Go a long way to go. Question number five. In 2011, this Raiders player led the team in two categories. He had 1,395 total yards and seven touchdowns. Who is he? 2011. In 2011, I was a sophomore in high school. <laughs> living nice. in New York. Living in Connecticut, so 2011. Darren McFadden. Ooh. So back up to Darren McFadden. It was Michael Bush. Yeah, Michael Bush. Michael Bush. 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 I'm gonna get destroyed by Raider fans after this. It's okay, man. You're you're young buck, man. Don't worry about it. Yeah, man. <laughs> All right, Che, hit him with this college basketball question. Dog. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right, so in 2006, the 11th seed George Mason University team shocked March Madness fans by making it all the way to the Final Four. Name three of the four teams they beat en route to the Final Four. I know two of them. One is North Carolina. There you go. One is Connecticut. There you go. One more. Uh, so they were an 11 seed. I think I, I, I'm just talking out loud. I think UNC was the three seed that year. Uh huh. I think U- UConn was the one seed. I'm gonna go. Uh, George Mason. Um. Stop. I'm just going to take a wild guess and say Texas. Oh. I know that's wrong. Oh, so close, man. That is wrong. So close, man. We've also taken Wichita State or Michigan State. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They'll take two out of three. Yeah, hey, man. Not, <laughs> that was close. Not too bad. Question number seven. What two-time Pro Bowl return man signed with the Oakland Raiders in 2017? Also no longer with the team. Uh, it's true. Yeah, uh, Cordero Patterson. There you go. Bam. There you go. Not doing too bad there, Matt. No. Not too shabby. No. Can I take this one? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Name the first film ever released by Happy Madison Productions. Oh, my God. That's a tough uh, question, Jay. Is yeah. it Billy Madison? Is that your final answer? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's probably wrong. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah. It is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it was Deuce Bigelow, male gigolo. Yeah, that's way before my time. <laughs> Shay threw a curveball at you right there. That was a curveball right there. That's a Rob Schneider movie? Rob Schneider's yeah. the star of that movie. Yeah. But it was the first Happy Madison production. That's good, that's good knowledge, bro. Yeah, man, that's good. Man. All right. And what year, and this, this question's on every episode, man. So uh, I know you're a diehard listener, never miss an episode. Uh, mm-hmm. I, know, I know you got Chase poster on your wall, <laughs> and you, you slap it every time you go out. <laughs> What's up, Chase? Got to drink Chela's. <laughs> In what year was the Oakland Raiders franchise first founded? Um, nineteen. 19- 59. Ah, you're off. One year, man. 
1960. I was off one year? That's not bad at all. It's not bad, but it was 1960. Established 1960. Yeah. Board up the windows, oh, that's Mac. So close. Like, that's a win. That's, that's a right answer. <laughs> hey, I'm, man. I like, I like your style, man. <laughs> if you're keeping score at home, that was wrong. <laughs> it's not bad, what though. Am, what am I at right now? You got four right. You got five wrong. You're, you're two away from Austin Gale. You got a ways to go. That was a halfway mark. Just, yeah. Just about. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention, we got two random questions. Yeah, two randoms. Two randoms. You right. want to take the first one? Sure. Take the first one. Okay, this first one, this, this is a doozy. No, I, I, I believe in you, man. I think you got this one. So, this question. What is the length of a U.S. senator's term? The length of the U.S. senator's term? Yes. Isn't it uh, two years? It's six years. Is that wrong? Six, six years. years. Maximum term is six years. All right. Now I'm just embarrassing myself. <laughs> it's all right. You're going to pick some here. You're going to pick some up on the home stretch. I believe in you, man. Be confident, man. Get here that, we go. Back get, into your thanks, wheelhouse right here. That. Get that red jacket on right now. <laughs> what division <laughs> foe? <laughs> what division foe did the Raiders beat 19 to 16 in Week 15 of the 2016 season to clinch a playoff berth? Did I confuse you? <laughs> what division foe did the Raiders beat 19-16 to in 2016 to clinch a playoff berth? I'll give you a hint. It was an AFC the West The San Diego Chargers. Bam! Didn't even get the hint out of my mouth. There he was go. right. He was right. You're doing pretty good on these Raiders questions. Yeah, man. For a young buck. Yeah. I should be. Be proud of yourself, man. All right. Question number 12. Chain, take it away. Yeah. All right. So in 2012, Matt, do you trim your eyebrows? <laughs> do I trim my eyebrows? No. Yeah, no, no plugs. All right, go ahead, Jake. <laughs> in 2012, the eyebrow, Anthony Davis, <laughs> led Kentucky to a national championship title and was also awarded the most outstanding player of the Final Four. How many points did Anthony Davis Score in the title game. You're killing him, Che. Oh, that's a that's a ridiculous question. Oh my, that's ridiculous. That's not college basketball knowledge. Let's do let's uh, do this. Let's do this, Matt. Let's do over. Oh under. no, no, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. I don't want to make you guys change your quiz. Twenty eight. Twenty eight. No, no. Anthony Davis scored six points in the title game. What I the thought, hell? I thought you might know that because of how bad of a game he had scoring wise. That's what. That's why I threw that in there. I no, didn't. Mean I sc- wouldn't have known that. That was that was a bullcrap question. Right there. <laughs> that's a wild question. Trent. That that does stick out though. That was that's shocking. Six points. Six points. That uh, is. I didn't. But know in, that. in his defense, he also had like seventeen rebounds or some shit like that. Like yeah, yeah. he put up numbers in other in other areas. All right. Back to the Raiders. Entering the 2019 season, who holds the record for most touchdown passes in Raiders history? It's Ken Stabler, right? That's correct, young buck. There you go. That's correct. You got one, two, three, four, five, six. You have tied Austin Gale. You got several to go. You still got the daily double ahead of you. You're doing all right. Yeah. Most people don't do too well. No, he's doing good. <laughs> he's doing good, right? He's doing. We're throwing some curveballs at him, you know, but he's doing good. Staying on his feet. Hell yeah. He's taking some punches. Yeah, man. He's taking hacks at him. He's fouling some pitches off right now. I like it. Yeah. All right. Next question comes from Che. Oh, yeah. Back to your wheelhouse with the Adam Sandler questions, man. We got a question about the water boy. What team did Bobby Boucher play for? In the movie The Water Boy. Oh boy, I've never seen The Water Boy. This is not going to end well for me. Oh. Um. Oh boy, I don't even want to guess on this one for fear of being so wrong. So I'm just going to pass. I've never seen that movie. Damn, bro, man. All right, well, 
Hit them with that buzzer, Kenny. The, the answer we were looking for is the South Central Louisiana State University Mud Dogs. Of course. <laughs> of course. Yep. Wouldn't have gotten that one. <laughs> we would have also accepted Mud Dogs. Yeah, Mud Dogs would have been all right. Yeah. All right. 50 career fumbles is the most ever in Raiders history. Who owns that? Oh. Who dropped the ball 50 times? 50 career fumbles. Career fumbles. Lost fumbles or just fumbles? Fumbles. Fumbles. Fumbalaya. Fumble risky. <laughs> um, it's got to be a quarterback, so I am going to say... Um, no stone. I'll just go with Ken Stabler again. Ah. It was Marcus Allen, man. Marcus Allen. No, so it wasn't a quarterback. You touch the ball that many times, you're bound to drop it a few. Yeah. Might have been one of the reasons why he was in uh, Al Davis's uh, doghouse. Also. <laughs> All right, Che, you got the next one. All right, back to college basketball, man. Okay, this one isn't going to be statistics, okay? So you sh- you got a shot at this one. In 2008, this current NBA star led Cinderella program Davidson on a run that fell just one game short of the Final Four. Who is he? This is an insulting question because I'm currently in Portland covering his team, Stephen Curry. <laughs> there you go. That was correct. There you go, bro. Are we gonna sweep? Are we gonna sweep the Blazers? Should I get my broom uh, out? Yeah. All, right. All right, all right. He says yes. Shout out to Draymond Green. That was a hell of a performance last night. Hell of a performance. Chase a Laker fan over here, but yes, I am. He's got respect. You got respect. I got respect. Yeah, you got respect. I respect good ball. All right, this next question is a true or false question. It's a fifty-fifty shot, Matt. True or false? The silver and black have always carried the moniker Raiders. In other words, uh, the team from true. Oakland has always been named the Raiders. True or false? True. That is incorrect. For a brief period of time, what? they were known as the Oakland Seniors. Yes. Check the oh, history. I didn't book. know that. Check the almanac. <laughs> it's in there. It's very short. Very I short. Will. Short period of time, and then people were like, what? What is this? I believe as the story goes, they opened up the renaming of the team to fans. And they picked the seniors, and they were like, cool. And they were like, not cool. Nah, cool. We're the Raiders. <laughs> so. Good idea. <laughs> Good job, guys. Yeah. Uh, this is the last time a fan base has ever voted for a team name. <laughs> um, all right. Let's go back to you, Chad. We got a good rhythm going on here. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Final wheelhouse question. Okay. So we got to get this one. This is back in the Adam Sandler movies category. What was the final category that won Billy Madison his high school oh. diploma? That's a good question. I know this too. I do not. Damn, Jay. I, I want to say it was current events, but I don't think it was. <clears throat> Okay. Is that your final answer? Yeah, sure. Uh, correct answer was business ethics. Business. Oh, my God. You, you got to remember, the reason why he went back to get his diploma was to try to take over his dad's company. Uh, I know. So the oh. final category was business ethics. Something wrong with his medulla. I'm blood. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> that was the water boy. <laughs> All right, this next question is our daily double. It's worth two points. I'll give you a point for each correct answer. I'll give you two points if you get them both. The only two quarterbacks in Raider history have passed for six touchdowns in a single game. Who were they? Um, oof. I'll say Rich Gannon's one and Stabler's the other, but that's probably wrong. That's correct. You are wrong. <laughs> The correct answer. This is a tough one. This was a tough question, Matt. It was Tom Flores and Daryl LaMonica. Flores in 63, LaMonica in 69. 
Uh, okay. And you would have known those, man. Let's do a quick tally here. <laughs> Three, four, five, six, seven. He's got seven correct. He's got one to go to finish with a solid eight. Yeah. And this is a tough one, man. This is really tough. I feel bad even asking this question. Um, I've been known for asking questions about phobias on the podcast. <laughs> yes, yes. Laliophobia. Laliophobia. L-A-L-I-O-phobia. Oh, just give me the buzzer right now. I don't know what that is. <laughs> you asked for it, you got it. The correct answer right there would have been the fear of speaking. <laughs> yeah, I, I would not have gotten it. But you know what, Matt? You got 7 out of 20. And uh, hopefully- and, and you're a good sport, man. Thank you thank you for taking the, the two-minute drill. <laughs> it was a great sport. Hopefully, yeah, I, hopefully after all that, he'll still come back on the show. Hell yeah, man. Absolutely. Maybe he'll take another crack at this next time. Maybe we'll go Maybe. a little bit easier next time. There you go. Maybe we won't. <laughs> we, yeah, we <laughs> we haven't been known for taking it easy on people. You know what, though? I think Matt did better on the Raider questions than he did in his wheelhouse questions. Well, he uh, started off good with the wheelhouse questions. Yeah, he did. Then he I did. threw him for a loop with that statistical one. Matt, you did well. How do you feel after all that? I'm feeling uh, not too great. <laughs> Just, hey man, but you didn't come in. You didn't get the worst score, man. You 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 stayed ahead. Yeah, your boy Austin Gale. So I'll, you know, hey, I'll you got at least, myself on that. There you go. There you go. Hey, thanks for coming on, Matt. Yeah, always a great guest. We we'll always look forward to talking to you, and we'll talk to you again real soon. Yeah. Thanks, fellas. Appreciate it. Have a good night. You too. That was fantastic. That was good, man. Yeah, it was good. That was he, good. Matt's that was a, good. Matt's a good sport, man. Had a chance to run into Matt. I get, like I said, over at Ricky's. He's a real cool guy. Yeah. I walked up to him. I was like, hey, Matt. And he was like, who the fuck is this guy? He's all, hi. <laughs> yeah. He gave you that one, right? I was always, hi. I was like, it's, it's, it's Kenny from the Pillage Podcast. He's oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was real cool. Uh, he was there with Jerry. I tried to get, someone was trying to take a picture, I want to say, with maybe Lester Hayes. Okay. Or somebody right there. And I was like, bro, Jerry McDonald's right here. <laughs> you need to get a photo with him. There you go. I was like, Jerry, come on, take a picture with me. And he was like, nobody wants to see me in a photo. <laughs> and he stormed off, and I was like, oh, damn. I really look up to Jerry McDonald, man. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Um, before, you know, all the way. But website, you got that picture with Lester Hayes? I got that picture with Lester <laughs> Hayes, though. <laughs> yeah, you, you got damn right I did. I got my jersey signed and everything. Yeah, you did. Yeah. That's what's up. <laughs> yeah. I'll have Matt sign my jersey this year. There you go. Yeah. There you go. My, my red jacket. <laughs> yeah. And Matt's cool, man. Thank you, man. Thanks for coming on the show. Um, yeah, I think it's time to take a quick break, no? Nah? Yeah, yeah. And then we'll come back with uh, Kane's Corner and, Absolutely. and your phone call. So hang in there, guys, and we'll be right back. Yep. We out you. Peace. We're back. We're back on the air with Kane. We're going to do Kane's Corner right now. But before we do that, and Kane's on the line. What's up, Kane? Yeah, what's happening? What's y'all? Oh, it's time for another chela. That's oh, what's that's happening. right. That's what's happening. That's right. That's right. Uh, I heard it crack. That's I right. heard it crack. Uh, you got to bring up that screen real quick, man. <laughs> Unas demasiadas chelas <laughs> con che. Chelas. <laughs> that's, one, that's one too many I'm beers a, with I'm, che. I'm going to pour another one right here. Like, you see how I'm a- Give you guys that fresh pour. Oh shit! Nice fresh pour. pour. Yeah, I'm on my like, I'm on my like, I'm on my like yeah. fourth little hazy. But no. I'm, I'm just like right at the tipsy point. You, you <laughs> might, you might get anything from this mouth right now. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. All right. So the second, the second secret chela, right? Because the uh, segundo the chela, segunda, la segunda, la segunda, la segunda. La segunda. is uh is rogues mocha. Porter, all mm, right. It is good. Moog's, uh, rogues, <laughs> Moog, Moog's, <laughs> not Moog, <laughs> not that Moog, that rogues mocha 
porter, man. All right, it is tasty. And I haven't tasted. Oh well, yeah, we, we actually drank through one. What am I talking about? Stop lying, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got a lie to kick it, oh. dog. Sip it. Oh yeah, it's good. It's a good. If if you guys are is uh, that a is that a coffee stout? No, it's a porter, man. It's, it's a porter. So it's it's like it's a, got a little chocolate, yeah. little chocolatey notes to it. Yeah. Um, porter is a darker beer. Also, we, we're on some dark beers today. Yeah, we started with the roasted. This is a, this is like two blocks down from Stoutville. Yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you like a Guinness? Uh, like a Guinness? Like a Guinness? Not too much. Well, Guinness is a stout. But close to a Guinness. Uh, close. Not quite as creamy. It's definitely got a coffee note like the Guinness has, but it's it has more of a bite than a stout would normally have. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I don't have right, no, right. I don't have any of the numbers on this one. Well, mm-hmm. No, I don't have any of the numbers on this one just because mm-hmm. I think that's on the actual packaging from the six pack. Yeah, this is a smaller one. Possibly not. Rogue's pretty old school. They they they, they don't often do that. Um, but I, you know, what's odd? This is the Mocha Porter, but I got more of a. Um, yeah, I guess yeah, I guess the, the the chocolate notes there. Yeah, I was gonna say the more of a coffee note on the on the fresh roast. There, there is yeah, the, big the, coffee. Note the, fresh, the fresh the fresh roast had that coffee that coffee flavor mm-hmm. roasted. It, it was really malted that malt that roasted malt flavor, right? And this yeah. one's you know a little bit a little bit sharper. Little, you cannot see through this beer. Mm-mm. It is close to a stout. You can put you can put it in the light, man. Mm-hmm. Look at that. I'm putting it in the light. But the porter, is, I just is dark. I'm, I'm one that just like coffee and beer is like two different. They 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 don't go together for me. You know what I mean? It's like I want to be drunk and I want to go to sleep uh, after I feel like I'm too tired of being drunk. Uh, all right. So if I'm drinking <laughs> coffee, <laughs> I'll never go to sleep. It's like drinking uh, drambuki. You know what I mean? Drambuki, <laughs> like, drambuki. Yeah. I'm Drambu- high and I'm high. Drambu- you know Drambu- <laughs> is a liqueur. You put it in a in a drink called the Rusty Nail. Okay, is a popular Drambuie drink. And Drambuie is like is what is like a coffee flavored drink. I think so. I've never had it. It's like a fucking Kahlua then. It's something. It's something it's, similar. It's definitely a, a liqueur. It's, you know, sy- syrupy. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is good, man. It, this definitely has a bite on it, uh, like an ale would have. I think that's definitely what separates it from being a stout. Yeah. Um, it's not quite as thick, but you, like I said, you cannot see through this beer. Um, it doesn't quite have a, a head on it either, like a stout would. No, 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 no. And it's so. it, that's and that's it. It's not. It's not creamy. It's real. It's real. Like sharp, I, 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 don't, sharp. Know how, I yeah. don't know how to else to describe it. It's like real straight, you know. Yeah, it's it's a dark chocolate note, not a yeah. milk chocolate note, um, but it's good, man. As far as coffee and beer goes, I, I for one used to think that that was crazy, but way back in the day, and this was a throwback because you don't see this beer anymore. Is the Red Hook? Mm. Red Hook had the ESB, the extra stout, the extra black stout, or. And it, it was brewed with Starbucks coffee. That oh. was before there was a Starbucks on every corner. Right. And I remember trying that thinking, damn, this is actually really good. But I'm a major black coffee drinker. Right. 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 I, dr- I drink several cups a day. So but this is good, man. And Hell I, yeah. I think we're drinking these in the right order. Absolutely. I think so. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, man, Kane. It's Kane's Corner, bro. Welcome back. Welcome yeah, back. man. What's up? It's a slow news week. Hey, um, shout out to shout out to Matt Snyder for trying, man. <laughs> you know, damn, you know, I didn't know Matt was that young. God damn, bro. You know what I mean? But damn, damn. or you know what? I didn't know I was that old. <laughs> Stop <laughs> lying, you know man. Saying? I didn't know I was that. Let, let's put it like that. I didn't know I was that old. <laughs> damn, Matt. Uh, we, we, we still we still have yet to shout out to you bro when i see you out and about <laughs> shout out to you baby yeah. for trying we'll see man he's, he's, you you missed a lot of regular questions though baby yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean damn i'm still thinking damn. i'm still thinking kane's a dark horse to, to set a new high school uh, yeah i agree I, I, I don't agree. know if we can do it to one of our own though I don't want to do the damn thing <laughs> yeah, right yeah, now, you know dude. I'm not going to let you. And hey, I'm yeah. not going to let you. Yeah. I'm not going to let you, bro. Hey, come on, man. Look. Look, man. This, this, this kid, bro. You know I know you. You know, you think I'm going to let you put me through the gauntlet? No. That's not going to happen, my brother. I'm not going to let you do that to me. No, nah, you're right. going to pull up some shit that I never even thought that was a question. You know what I mean? No, nah, I'm, I'm good. I think I just passed with saying that I, I'm, I'm good, blessed with the knowledge that I already have. And if I don't know more than that, then you know what? I'll be glad to learn something else. You learn something new every day. Yeah. You know, I, I don't want to get out of them hot lights. 
I'm cool. And the music. I'm good. <laughs> word, word. I respect that. I'm not we're not gonna do it to our own. Oh, but the, the pillagers might 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 request otherwise someday. I might it's true, man. I might have to take one for the team someday. I don't know. But I get to write the question. You know what? That, there we go. <laughs> Kenny, you might have to take one for the team. There you go, bro. Oh, bro. You might have to take one for the team. And then me and Chay can hey. figure out some questions from Pluto. Oh, hey, man. Shit. You. Yeah, that listen. You never had it. You never heard before in your life. This test is from you the University I mean? of Mars. <laughs> Otis Sistrunk questions, bro. Damn, though. No shit. Uh. <laughs> Fellas, we're all locked in for next season. We all got our tickets. Hell yeah. I'm ready, bro. I'm, I'm ready. fucking ready too, dog. This van ain't ready though. Hey, if it's any of you pillagers live in the I, South Bay can work on a on a uh, econo line van, hit me up. <laughs> yeah, because I got some radiator problems right hey, now. Hey man, we did, y'all, issues, did man. y'all see homeboy that came up with the like the betting uh, predictions, the formats with like for gambling? No, yeah. and he had the Raiders. I, yeah, I got all the way to week eleven, and I was like, God damn, one eight and one by week eleven. Get the fuck out of here! Come on, man. Wow. But he 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 based it off gambling. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I had to, like, okay, whatever. But still, I mean, you could base it off gambling, and if you think that the Raiders would don't meet the point spread or whatever the case may be, you think we're going to be 1 8 and 1 at week 11? Fuck you. Get out of here. It don't make no sense. 8 and 1 or 1 and 8? No, 1 8 and 1. Oh. Yeah, by so week like one, 11. One win, yeah. eight losses, and one tie. Who the hell did we tie with? Yeah. I think it was the first game. I think I saw Denver, that thing too in week two. Like yeah, in week one. Yeah, yeah. Or the, what was it? Yeah, week one, week two. Yeah, yeah I think it was, it was like a week tie. One. Yeah, and like nah. the first but those are couple weeks. It's like basically betting odds. And he went on to explain because I think he was catching a lot of fucking heat. Sure, a lot of heat. I'm right, sure. people were ripping him up, and he was like, "No, oh, listen, these ain't predictions. These are basically like they're like gambling. Like how how to base your your bet. Right. Like this is where." What the odds are? These mm. are the, these are kind of look at them like, gotta, that and it's like like point like point predictions, right? You know, like if if they're gonna meet the point spread or whatever the case may be, like the Raiders wasn't gonna meet the point spread on all those weeks yeah. or whatever the case may be. It didn't have nothing to really do with whether we would win the game or not. But still, okay, so, it, it just didn't look good. It's so, just another form of hate, in my opinion, of what we being thought of that we can't do or can't accomplish with this team and this roster. Damn. You know, so it, it just is, it, it, and obviously it bothered a lot of Raider fans. You know, so if, if we're one eight and one, is. if we're one eight and one after ten games, I, I'm quitting the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> shit is a wrap. Don't fucking say shit like that, dog. Okay? I just said it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I fucking... think I'm. A, I, I don't want you to say shit like that, bro. <laughs> you never know what might happen. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. I don't think we'll be one eight and one, and I don't think none of us. In Raider Nation will be thinking that either, but you know, I don't know why this dude had it like we wouldn't meet the point spread in all those games either. This is what it sounds like to me. It's another for, it's another form of hate. You can look at it like a point spread thing or a bet gambling thing or whatever the case may be, but it's a, it's another form of hate. And well, for one eight and one, to talk about during the off season. For one eight and one, I'm I'm definitely taking a vacation. Yeah, I ain't dealing with that shit anymore, right. dog. Ah. Uh, if we won eight and one, bro, you going to New York? That's uh, true. We like what twelve, yeah, ten? True. So you are uh, going on vacation. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> so you are going on vacation. You a part of that shit? <laughs> you a part of the one eight and one? Me too. Yeah, yeah. for I'm, that matter. So me, it, me, yeah, me and King and Road Dogs, we, we we travel wherever, and we're gonna do our best to like try to chronicle that whole journey and i'm gonna try to get interviews throughout the whole weekend talk to a lot of it'd be a different kind of show that week i'm really looking forward to that yeah uh, we got a rooms book bobby staying in the same hotel uh, shout out to viral Warner, to larry all day from reddit uh he's staying in the same hotel um kane staying in the same hotel it's gonna be that a hey, hilton's hilton's about to feel the wrath bro <laughs> I'm about to be banned from all Hilton. Red Nation is on our way there. <laughs> we on our way there. Matter of fact, we booked to yeah. get prepared and get ready. Make some extra pizza because there's going to be a you run know? on pizza, dog. There's going to be a run on pizza and Chinese food. When hey, I'm man, done. all I'm saying is don't get – you show up to one of these pizza spots, don't get aggressive with these motherfuckers. These New Yorkers don't fuck around, man. They in their grumpy as shit. Uh-huh. You don't want don't don't go up to their fucking to their counter asking for a slice of pizza the wrong way, man. Come <laughs> nah. up there, come up there, nice, man. Okay, because these guys ain't having it, man. 
I'm just telling you from oh, shit, man. You <laughs> got to give us. You got to tell us what we how we, how we got to work, where where we got to go, what we got to do, and where can I get a, a good ass slice of New York pizza? I mean, the, the, you know, I'm I'm so sick of hearing oh New York got the thinnest slice, the crispiest, yeah. this that. Tell me where can I get that? Well, listen, man. The only two, the only I only had pizza in in uh, in Brooklyn, at mm. two spots. I don't know what the fuck the names were because we. I was just walking. I walked one one uh, one day that I was there because my boy was in the middle of still being in. He was still in school. He was at Pratt, and then uh, and then he was working. So while he was gone, I was like, "Fuck, I got I got yeah. I got to explore on my own," you yeah. know. So I just took to to walking, man, and I went and I walked down. To this little corner spot, little pizza place that was down the down the street from his uh from his apartment building, mm-hmm. um it was good. It was yeah. good. I got a couple slices. I got like a I got that margarita, straight margarita, right? And yep. then I had they had like a pesto one, mm. and I got that one. And uh, mm. it was good, S- thin slice, right? That's all they do, really. You go any the fuck any of the fucking pizza places in, in New York, you're gonna get a fucking <laughs> New York slice, that thin yeah. fucking thin crust, right? And Folded real simple, real simple. They don't, they don't do no, they don't fuck with no combinations. They don't, they don't do no goddamn like crazy. No, I pizzas, just want bro. some pepperoni. I just want that's a it. slice of pepperoni. Yeah. And that's and that, that and that might even they, you, know you, might, you might even get a sideways look if you ask for that, dog. Honestly, because they don't really Is fuck that with that. Right? Yeah, they don't really fuck with it like that. I'll go with the cheese. I don't they're, give a fuck. They're really about that margarita, that fucking like cheese, that fucking basil, and that marinara sauce. And then you know, okay. and you, you can get a pepperoni slice, but then they might be like, "You ain't from here," crack you know, it. like that. <laughs> you can crack okay. an egg. Okay, yeah, okay. hey, you yeah. know what? You just gave me some gang. I'm, I'm, I'm soaking it up like a sponge. But yeah, man, right so now. I had one there, and I don't know exactly where it, that's that's right around the Pratt Pratt uh, University area. And then there was another spot a little further out. Uh, fuck it. Uh, it was kind of more like. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even remember. This is a while back when I went out. When I was out there, mm-hmm. we walked too. We were fucking. We huffed it, man. We were oh, yeah. huffing. Oh, we yeah. were walking for a while too. We walked through all fucking Brooklyn. We were actually over there by like the Barclays Center, and then we fucking walked back and we walked and we and we spotted this little pizza place. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with it, man. I'm with okay. it. Okay. <laughs> and shout out to uh, Chuck McCann from the uh, Inebra Nation podcast. Yeah. Old Splatterhead over there. Hell yeah. Uh, he's actually going to do a lot, man. He's picking me up on Wednesday. I'm flying into Newark. He's going to pick me up there. That's what's up. He's going to drive me into, uh, well, I'm in the financial district, but near downtown New York City uh, hotel. Uh, he's going to show me around a little bit Wednesday night. He's going to crash. I know he works in Manhattan on Thursday. Am I doing too much? Am I putting too much out there? <laughs> and um, he's going to be around. So we're going to be in good hands with the Niebuhr Nation. Of course, they run the uh, the Black Hole chapter in New Jersey out there. Right. So, Kane, I think I think they're going to put up uh, put us up on a lot of games. As it, we as it's, right. As it stands right now, I'm, I, I get in on Friday at 5 o'clock, but I'm trying to uh, work work it to where I'm, I'm going to get there on Thursday. Okay. Instead, maybe a day extra uh I just got to, uh, I'm looking at my vacation time and some scheduling and shit. Mm-hmm. Um, with the way my job work, uh, if, if I, I, I'm responsible. I'm, I'm like a subcontractor, so I'm responsible for all my customers. So I need to make sure that I can be that, have that much time off. Mm-hmm. So, right. um, you know, yeah, yeah well, it is what it is. You know, a lot of the other technicians don't want to cover for you and shit yeah. when you're off. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, so got- it's one of them things. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a sales competition thing, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? The, 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 yeah, everybody's on, 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 you know, working day commissions and shit. No, nobody would really, you know. So I'm trying to see what's up, man. I got a, I got a couple of allies on my team. Maybe I might be able to get out of here a day earlier. But I'm trying to get there a day earlier, man, because I, I would like to experience it. I've never been there. Me either. And I want to, no, I've never been there, man. And so I want to experience it the best that I can. You know what I'm saying? I want to try to get as much as I can in, in them few little days that I'm going to be there and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, or at least make a list of the most important. And you know what? That, that's a, that's a, that's a big list, but I want to try to shorten that list into maybe 10 things that I can do or, or you know, while I'm there for the few days that I'm there, you know, that we all there, you know, so uh, I don't want to tie it up into partying and just being in one specific spot yeah. and just drinking and getting drunk. Yeah. And then, I, you know, I don't wasted a whole 
you know. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, man. If you're gonna so do we'll that, we'll see how this all works out. If you're gonna do that, uh, I don't know if you guys have plans on 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 doing that that ferry to uh, Ellis Island and uh and to the nah. Statue of Liberty. Nah, um, <laughs> nah. If you are if you are gonna go, man, just just be prepared because that that bitch gets cold. I man. think that that's ferry's like, that's cold like as fuck, the least is boring this thing, and I, I think yeah. I mean if I'm gonna do that, that's gonna be like at ten o'clock at night, eight o'clock in the morning, where there's nothing else going on, mm-hmm. no drinking and no nothing, you know. <laughs> yeah, I might hop on the, the Ellis Island ferry and take it to, at seven in the morning to see the Statue of Liberty. But <laughs> I don't want to do that at like four. I don't know. I don't know if they that, have you know, five, boats ready at that <laughs> when it's time to be kicking it. We're staying. You know? We're staying. Yeah. We're staying right there at Ground Zero. So that, yeah. that'll be right there. We're gonna get around, man. I know Brooklyn Bridge is nearby. I definitely want to see Brooklyn. Um, we're gonna get around. I want, I want to go to Chance Dragon Inn because Joey Diaz says I gotta go there. there you go. So we'll see what's up. <laughs> uh, but yo, uh-huh. Don't forget, man, Vanessa's Dumplings, man. All right. Vanessa's Dumpling House, man. Oh, that sounds good. And, hey, that cheap, what they that serve cheap there, dumplings, Jay, Can we get a preview? Yo, they, they serve dumplings, bro. Exactly what I'm fucking calling it, man. So they it's like... Uh, Chicken and dumplings? So they got them steamed, nah. them steamed dumplings, man. Them steamed buns and stuff. Chinese so they got, they're like stuffed with like fucking pork or shrimp oh, or whatever. Oh, like pork buns. Yeah, pork yeah. Pork buns and shit like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking yeah. you talking about like southern chicken and dumplings and nah, shit like nah, that nah, 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 just, nah, nah. No, you no. know yeah oh. no i'm talking about yeah i'm talking about asian food bro oh, i'm talking you, about you like a spicy pork bun <laughs> yes i do <laughs> yes no, i do that shit's good okay, bro. I'm, 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 it is, is cheap it full of meat it was mad cheap man Ooh. all i know is you get a gang of shit for fucking cheap man mm. um so and you can order up a bunch of a bunch of different orders man it's it's mad cheap when i went at least it was mad cheap so, i think i got an order so I think I ordered like, I think I ordered like the, the pork, uh, pork dumpling, and then I might have gotten like an order of like pot stickers or something like that, and like a snapple, right? Like a snapple out the fr- out the fridge. Yeah. For like, <laughs> for like, for no joke, yeah. for no like no joke for like two fifty. Shit, that's two dollars. Snapple, snapple like costs two dollars for like two dollars and fifty cents, bro. I'm I'm no <laughs> joke, no joke. No joke. That was like in 1998, so, though. No, bro. <laughs> so what's up with this? So we, so we heard that. Those are Bill we Clinton heard prices, that, uh, that Dougie Fresh spot was shut down. Yeah, Dougie's is closed um, down. Dougie's is closed down. Uh, there's a so, gang. So what's the what's the what's some what's some good place a good spot to get some East Coast so food? I'm just trying to you know I'm I'm a, I'm a food connoisseur and I like to eat yeah all yeah. kind of oh, food but King. I like to especially. Dive into some soul food oh, wherever Kane. I go. You know, Kane, you Orleans, mean, wherever I've been, you, I've tried to eat some soul food from that that part of the continent. You right? missed, you, you know, mi- so you, you missed out tonight because I made oxtail, bro. Yeah, it was good, man. Yeah, I made that oxtail. Oh no, you didn't. Yeah, I did. See, y'all be doing me cold, man. <laughs> Don't nobody tell me shit. Ain't nobody called me and said that. You know what I'm saying? Well, actually, actually, now I got like a. Man, an uh, 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 arrow shot through my heart, heart. You know what I'm saying? A nigga didn't get no ox t- oxtails. Yeah. Fuck, but, y'all had rice and gravy and shit too. Nah, we rice I did, and gravy. I did. Uh, I did like a Chinese oxtail stew. But um, to be fair, I made collard I made, greens and cornbread and I, shit. I made this on Man. I made this on Friday for my lady. It was just happened to have some leftovers. Yeah. But hey, let's talk about some Raiders. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about some Raiders. It's been a slow news week, Kane. Give me one headline that you would like to wake up to tomorrow. Give me one headline you'd like to wake up to manana. Hunter Renfro, five catches, 100 yards, and two touchdowns. The Raiders win over the Kansas City Chiefs 31-24 to Ooh, in a close it? battle all the way down to the end of the fourth quarter. Renfro with the game-winning catch. How about that? Just like we used to see from Seth Roberts, I think we're going to see that same shit from Renfro. I think he he steps right in and replaces the almighty only doing catch-down touching Seth Roberts. That's just what I think. Mm. We'll see. Okay. Uh, Johnny says he's going to take us to Harlem because he's got spots out there. Um, by the way, just, just to double back on that, I like that headline. That's a good headline. Lev Bell, Le'Veon Bell, rumored. I don't know. How strong is this rumor? Rumored to be on the trade block. Is that a strong rumor? 
Was that bullshit? I don't know, bro. I think it's just fucking people throwing shit out there right now and seeing if it sticks. Just because it's because of uh, of the recent fire of the GM, right? Yeah, and, and they're saying that the guy that kind of uh, well is it Gase that kind of took over is like Gase, right, yeah. he kind of like took over right now. Yeah. I don't know if he's gonna be there permanent, interim, but just interim yeah. right now, right? Yeah. And they're saying that he wasn't really big on trading for Bell. Yeah, and that's why they're that's why this is coming up now. So Josh Jacobs gets drafted by the Oakland Raiders or signing Bell. He they didn't trade for him. They signed uh, him, right for you. Yeah. Isaiah Crowell, mm-hmm. obviously out with the injury. So we bring back the muscle hamster. So you got Crowell. I mean, so you got the hamster. You got Doug Martin. You got Josh Jacobs. You got J.D. Richard. You still got DeAndre Washington and Chris Warren on the squad. One of those fools is going to go. All that said, Kane, if Bell is on the trading block, are you buying or selling? Are, are you a taker in that trade? Mm, I'm, I'm, you know what? That, we, that trade has already passed us by. And I... And I I, I posted a just to to clarify this because a whole lot of people kind of try to ridicule me for this question. I posted this because this is the shit that happens with the media. Once you hear some shit that a player is not wanted or this or welcome that, or it was a situation where the GM got fired, there is going to be some speculation about a the player getting traded, and you know B teams want to pick them up. So I just you know. Being just nonchalantly, just like knowing football, because I've been fucking dealing with this shit for 20, 30 something years of my life. Facts. Every fucking year. Yeah. I know how the fucking media works. I know how shit goes. I know what words and what shit gets spoken. So there's going to be some talks about Lev Bell getting traded. Anytime you got somebody, someone out there said that he's not wanted in the Jets, then there's going to be a, a question. And before that, question even happened i had already just put a little questionnaire out there like hey you know if, if, if he's on a trade block do you want to trade for him as a raider well you know what no i i didn't say i wanted to trade for him i just said do you think we should you know um so no i'm 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 i'm, I'm a seller i don't want we did that ship sailed and passed us when we drafted josh jacobs yeah thank you man my, my point that i was trying to make that with that was like, do you see how people when they chase money, when they chase paper, you didn't take, you didn't really look at your options like you should have. The Jets are a fucking dumpster fire. When you signed with them, they was a dumpster fire. You know what I'm saying? And it just, it just escalated from there. Even they had a pretty good draft. They had a pretty good draft. They had a pretty good, you know, uh, free agent signing. I don't know what happened. I, I, I don't know. I don't work for the Jets. <clears throat> You're a dumpster fire right now because you fucking fired your general manager who did your draft, who picked all your players, who signed all your free agents, and who did everything for your team. I don't know that. But like you said, you asked me a question, and I'll get back to that. Am I buying the trade or selling? I'm selling. I don't – I don't. we don't need to live, but that, that shit's come and gone at this point. Okay. Fair enough, and I'm I'm glad. And I only asked that to you because because Jen kind of brought it to, brought it up to me. We were texting back and forth during the week, and he was like, "He's on the block. Would you take him?" And I was like, I, "Same with Kane." Man. I was like, "Nah, bro. You got Josh Jacobs. You're gonna roll with that." We ran on Lev Bell. We offered him money. He said no, and uh, now he's over there at the Jets and the dumpster fire, and he's a part of that. And we just be happy we got Jacobs, and we don't have to deal with none of that mess. Our, you know, our money's invested in youth right now. Yeah, and you got it, I got a hot take for you. Okay. Get get your finger ready. Oh, all right. Get your finger ready. Here jo- we go. Josh Jacobs, Offensive Rookie of the Year. Hot. It's a hot Ooh, it's a hot that's a hot really hot take. That motherfucker burning down houses <laughs> for miles and miles and miles around. But we'll see. <laughs> Woo. All right. Hot take, man. Don't forget it. Don't that's forget a hot it. take. You know, that's, that's, that's a win-win because if he's not, hey, as long as he didn't shit the bed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, another thing that's been flowing around lately is uh, hard knocks, man. Raiders are, are, I think, the final three, because I think the Niners are out for some reason at this point, probably because they're boring as shit. Um, <laughs> Kane, would you like to see the Raiders on hard knocks? A, a team? No. 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 Strong. No, no, and no. <laughs> this team don't need no star quality, no, no, nothing extra than it's already got. No. And I don't even need to. No. 
No. I mean, I'm just like, no, for real, no. Like, no, there's no way we should be on hard knocks. We're we're focused on trying to – no. Fuck no. <laughs> we ain't no joke. No, man, no. I don't even why, – why am I trying to explain this shit? No. No. Absolutely not. <laughs> like, like Chuck D no. said, no, 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 no. 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 Hey, shout oh, out to man. Chuck D. All right. All right. I'm 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 with you there. I, you know what? Here's the thing. As a, as, currently, Raiders are not on hard knocks. And so I'm like, nah, I don't want to see that. Right. But if they were on hard knocks. You'd be watching it every I'd fucking week. I'd be glued to my TV. Hell yeah, you would. But now nah, I don't want to see that. For all the reasons Kane already listed. And you, do you really want that drama? Nah. No. That follow no, hard knocks? No. 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 You don't, bro. <laughs> you want the drama. You Wait, wait, wait. You want the drama. No, he's no. I want God the drama. Che, you want the drama. We all want the drama. So come on now. We want it, but do you really want to be on that shit? Fuck no. Nah. Nah. I'm good. Nah, I'm good. Especially because... But, but if they let us on it, we'd be happy than the motherfucker because we ain't got no choice. We didn't make a choice. I mean, if you yeah. put us on there, then of course we're going to watch the shit. I mean, you know it, what I'm saying? But if I had a choice to make, yeah. no. I don't want y'all on there. I mean, with Absolutely jo- not. With, with John Gruden, no. it would definitely be the most entertaining season of Hard Knocks ever. But I think, just like he said, you're just inviting too much drama. Absolutely. And I like to keep up the tradition of the Raiders being a team shrouded in mystery, you know, putting up uh, putting up tarps at practice and just, you know, security in the parking lot and, you know, all that. I, no. <laughs> Do we really need that much speculation no. between Mike Mayock and John Gruden? No. Do you really need to <laughs> dig that deep into their relationship to try to fault or find some – fucking shit that'll break up. Uh, no, nah, I'm good. No. I'm good. They don't get... Do they get along every day? No. Do no. I need to see that they get along every day? No. no. I don't. <laughs> no. Hell I'm no. I'm good. All right. Seriously. That's okay. all you're going to see. So I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I told you guys. You remember, remember last season? I, I, I watched my first season of Hard Knocks last season, and I told you Hugh Jackson looked like a, a clown on that show. Yeah. I told you it wasn't going to last over there. Yeah, and he fucking fired. He's he, fired, bro. Real quick. He got fired real quick. Real fast. And uh, hey. no. All right. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. One more question for you. Actually, two more questions. Uh, I got one for myself, and there's one here from the chat. Uh, Charles McBride wants to ask a question. But first, there we go. I asked this question to Matt. I want to ask you, Kane, because I feel like you might have a different answer. Uh, most intriguing camp battle going into this offseason. What do you think it is? Ooh, that's a good question. Most intriguing camp battle is Carl Joseph and uh, uh, can't think of the kid's first Abel. name. The, the Trayvon Mullen. Oh, Mullen. Trayvon okay. Mullen and Car- Carl Joseph, the two safeties that uh, – uh, the safety they drafted. Well, I think, I think that's going to be a very intriguing battle yeah. because I don't think the Raiders know where they want to play Carl Joseph. You know what I'm I don't even think the Raiders know if they have a spot for Carl Joseph. But the reason why I think it's going to be a battle is because he's still on the roster and he's still trying to, he's a first round pick just like yeah. Mullen is. And he's going to try to battle for his spark starting spot as well as Mullen is. And Mullen is the guy that's won it, and 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 in my opinion, Joseph is the guy that's not is on the on the sitting on the outside, not not so much on the bubble, but we just don't know what you want. We want to do with you. We want you at free safety. We want you at strong safety. Might we play you at linebacker a little bit? We just don't know. So that that's going to be an intriguing battle for me. Yeah, I, I think Mullen's training more towards corner because that's what he was in college. I, I, I see maybe the battle being Abram versus Joseph more than anything. Um, but Mullen, Abram, that's what yeah. I meant. I'm sorry. Yeah, Abram, that's, that's who I meant. And my, I want, my, yeah, and I want to remind our listeners. I want to remind our listeners. It, tonight. Yeah, it's, it's <sighs> Abram. It's not Abrams. Yeah, it's reminding our listeners. It's Abram, not Abrams. Y'all want to start calling him. Uh, what was his name? Oh, Martavius Abrams. <laughs> <laughs> it's Martavius Bryant. Yeah, it's, it's Abram. It's Jonathan Abram. Jonathan Abram. And it's Jonathan. Yeah, no, J- that that. But that's that's the matchup I meant, bro. Yeah. Let me correct myself. Well, that's that, what I meant. That, yeah, that's a good. That answer. matchup is going to be the most intriguing matchup right that, there. That's a good answer because it jives with uh with with Charles McBride's question. He wants to know Kane. If you think Eric Harris could start at free safety with Abram at strong safety and Joseph being the third uh, safety slash linebacker rover like like a like a Tyrone Matthew or or, or is he trade back? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. 
I th- absolutely. If if you want to, <sighs> okay. Yes, that is a good concept. But you got to remember that Carl Joseph is a is a first round draft pick. Mm-hmm. So that means that his impact on the defense should be more than a third sniper guy. That's mm-hmm. somebody. That's that's an Eric Harris role. If you if, if you want to swap, you know, if you want to say. You want a sniper, somebody that's going to come in there. You want somebody that this you didn't draft in the first round. The first round pick, you he should be a cornerstone of your defense. He should be somebody that's a leader on your defense, somebody that's leading the charges. Then if you got if you got Carl Joseph playing as your third safety, you're probably going to trade him. Mm. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. You're, you you if you think that lowly of him. There's another team that thinks that highly of him. It's true because you already have like four safeties on your roster already. Yeah, I, you know. So I feel like the uh, the Raiders, the Raider safety situation it's it's a confusing one, right? It's complicated. You got you got Joiner in there who's was franchise tag who can also move down into the slot. I think in the four three you're going to see Joiner and Abram back there, but I think in the nickel you're going to see Joiner slide down and possibly Eric Harris move in there, right? With Abram over so there. So there's no room for Carl Joseph. With Carl Joseph moving down into like that mid linebacker position. Uh, the position that they wanted Obi to be in. Or if, a hybrid linebacker. Yeah. If a hybrid linebacker. If they employ Joseph even in that set. And and, and like McBride mm-hmm. said, he might be trade bait. What they get for Joseph, I don't know, because he's not an every down. Do you player. keep a first round draft pick as a hybrid linebacker? I don't think you do, man. I really I don't guess think you, you can do. if that wasn't your draft pick because you're not Reggie McKenzie, but yeah. I mean I mean, if you're Reggie McKenzie, yeah. that that says you you failed as a as a GM. If your first round draft pick ends up being a hybrid linebacker, and here's a tricky you draft as a safety. Here's a tricky thing: is Carl Joseph as trade bait is, you know, he's a free agent at the end of the season. He's not going to command a lot of money. You're talking about a guy who's now worked himself into a specialist role. You know me; I got seventeen thousand Carl Joseph jerseys. <laughs> Don't forget that. Yeah. Uh, but he's he's a specialist. He's a hitman right now. He's he's an assassin. He's a sniper. Yeah. I still like Carl, but at what cost? Right? We're not bringing him back. We're not. He's not even option. Eric Berry at this point. He's not. He's not. So you know, I don't think that they're going to get anything in a trade. I think they're going to run with KJ this year, and you know, they're going to use him as a special weapon. That's basically what he's going to be. He's going to be fresh legs when we need him, and he's going to be a special weapon. Uh, I, you're going to see him blitz a lot. I think you're going to see him be a missile. You know, I think I think that's what you're going to see. I think he's great in run situations. He's a run stopper. Um, but as far as like coverage safety, we know that's not Carl Joseph. They're going to give him another shot this year. They're going to see what happens, and they're they're probably going to put him on the field to see if they can get some trade value out of him. But I don't see them dealing KJ, and if they do, I mean the return on that's going to be slim. Um, so it's it's the last year for Carl Joseph. However, it shakes out. It's a great so question. It's not worth Brian. it to trade him. It's, it's, it's not. It's not worth it to trade him. It's like a missile Mike situation. Yeah, I mean, it's like, do you, you? It's a uh, yeah. I Same think, thing. I think if you basically, can, I think if you can get a fourth for him, you trade him. Anything below that, you just let him walk next year. Right. You know, I, I think the fourth is the highest value you're going to see on Carl Joseph, and that's saying a lot. I don't think anyone's going to give that up, knowing he's a free agent at the end of the year. You know, and, and again, he's not. That's a good question, McBride, because we can go around and around on this for a long time. I really do. But you know what, though, it, the the other thing is is you might it might be one of those things you wait to see how the season starts to play out, right? Um, a second year in the same defensive scheme under Paul Gunther, right? He started off kind of in the doghouse, didn't really get the playing yeah. time early on, yeah. And then he came on later, so maybe he mm-hmm. picks up something. Maybe he's he's on he starts off on a where he left off, and he continues to grow. And then somewhere in the middle of the season, then you start to rethink that. You yeah. say, okay, do we want to keep Carl Joseph, or is there enough value there to try to trade him? If it's not, if he's not the guy, yeah, um, I think that's... see the thing with that is the thing with that is is that he wasn't he's not a that staff player, you understand? He's not he's not that GM's pick, so you know if he doesn't fit all the way, um, then why are we trying to piece him in? Right. I'm I'm just saying how the coaching staff might be looking at it, you know, not us as fans. But I'm saying as coaching staff, I'd be looking like, hey, you know, we didn't draft this dude anyway. You know what I'm saying? So if he don't fit the fucking shit, why are we trying to just make it work? Let's well, just trade him or let's just cut him. 
Right. You but, know, but I don't. But see, that's the thing is right now, if you look at it, you're going to say, well, what kind of value does he have? If he's not the guy that we want or he's not the guy that we think fits the scheme, you say, what kind of value does he have? If he doesn't have enough value for you to trade him, then maybe you try to build him up, build some stock up in him mm-hmm. to try to trade him for mm-hmm. something. Right. Um, and I would hope that, would be, that they would that, do that. That would be the reason for for investing more time mm-hmm. into him. Um, because other than that, then you're just cutting them. You're 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 taking a loss, and you're not getting anything in return. Yeah. So the smart the smart play is to Absolutely. try to is to try to build him up and, and get people to start talking about him. And if he's not the guy that you want, if he's not the guy that you really want to fit the scheme, mm-hmm. if he hasn't grown on you, then you build him up enough to so that you raise the stock and and, yeah. and, and you get something for him, man. And uh, but 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 yeah. has that has that been? Has that been this coaching staff, or let's just not even coaching staff, this John Gruden, has that been his narrative since he's taken over? Has, his, has, he, get, has he said, I want to give Reggie McKenzie's players a chance? I, I, no, nope. he hasn't. No. Nope. You know what I'm saying? So, well, but I mean, you yeah, say so, that, you say that, but, and, and that's how it started off, right? It was kind of, here's my thing. I think John came in, and we take this as like a personal thing. We, we, we keep mentioning like, well, did John really give uh, Reggie McKenzie's players a, a fucking a chance? I don't think it has much to do with that, whether or not the players are his or his, or not, because Derek Carr is still here, and that's not John's player. Mm-hmm. John didn't select Derek Carr, but he loves Derek yeah, Carr. The only one still here, though. But right, yeah. but, uh, okay. I mean, Carl Joseph is still here, too. <laughs> He's still here for whatever reason. He's still not gone. So I don't. I don't necessarily buy into that whole idea that he's like I'm. I'm not with any of these guys. He just thinks you guys haven't performed, bro. Like I'm coming in, and all I've seen is you guys lose. So I don't buy into you guys being the guys, and you guys got to prove to me different. So you walk into this situation and you say, okay, I want to see the heart. I want to see the buy-in. I want to see who's really here for this team. Who's really bought into this franchise? Who really wants to make the Raiders a winner? And then you start fucking, you know, you start weeding them out. You start saying, okay, So not you blame you, the players and not, not so much the coaches then. No, so John not, Gruden came in and said, it's I, not the coaching staff, it's the players. I'm not saying that either. I'm just saying he hasn't been here. So he can't say what's what. He's walking in fresh and new. He hasn't seen whether the coaching staff sucked. Obviously it did because it's gone. But he still has to see buy-in from the players. He still has to see that these guys are committed to actually becoming winners. So when you walk into the situation, you're going to say, okay, you guys don't get an automatic pass from me just because you were the starters with this other coaching staff. There's a reason why I'm here. They weren't any good. And if they thought you were good, then maybe I question that too. So prove me wrong. And so you're going to start on the bench. And maybe I'm going to go with somebody else and make and, and maybe light a fire under your ass and see where you're at. Carl Joseph was on the field at the well, end of the I, season, I, was he not? Yeah. You know so, what, Jay? I can did be it the work? devil's advocate. I can be the devil's advocate to that. I can be the devil's advocate to that. That's that comment, bro. Um, you, you said that he didn't know. Yes, he didn't know. Um, so the the narrative is if we didn't hire John Gruden, that 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 uh, Mark would have kept. Jack Del Rio and made him, you know, switch his, his coaching staff around. That's the narrative. We That's what we hear. We don't know if that's true. That's just what we hear. So if that's the narrative, if we didn't get John Gruden, then we still have the players that we have today. So if that's the case, then did John Gruden come in and just say, I don't want the players that's here because I don't I didn't pick them. Then I'm my players, and I'm a guy that don't fit my scheme. I don't know whatever you said. Well, Derek you did, Carr's you Reggie Look, pick. I'm, I'm still I'm, here. I'm, I'm down with John. Wait, wait, Gabe, hold on. Gabe Jackson I know still what here. Say. Real quick, I'm just going to say that I can be devil's advocate. And we all can be devil's advocate with that. You know what I'm saying? It's just a matter of what you think. You know what I'm saying? So really what happened, John came in here, and he's gotten his own staff. He's gotten his own players that he wants, no matter what Reggie McKenzie's players did. We don't really know if they mesh or not. You got rid of the best fucking defensive end ever to play football in the last 10 years. So we don't really know what your narrative is or what your thinking was, John, when you came in here. We just Raider fans. We follow along because we love you. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, 
if you didn't get John Gruden, you still stuck here with Jack Del Rio because Mark Davis said he wasn't going to fire him. So how do you look at that? I mean, you you look at it. You can't you can't look at it from the standpoint of like what what what's supposed to be if Jack Del Rio was still here because he's not here, dog. We can't do that. All I'm saying he's is not here. But if John Gruden didn't take the job, let's just say if John Gruden didn't take the job, right? Those but players are still here, are they? Possibly, not? possibly. I think you're. I think you're right. But does that mean that we're headed in the right direction? I'm not here to argue whether or not the players would be here. I'm here to argue that John's looking for fuckers that are bought into this franchise, man. He's looking to put together a winning franchise that's not stuck because of cap situations. It's not stuck because they're overpaying fucking players that don't deserve it or that don't really want to be a part of this team. That's what I think. That's what I, I think he came in here and he came in with like a hard ass and he said, well, fucking, you got to earn this. And if you don't want to talk to me, then fuck, you can go. That's what I think he's thinking. When he comes into the situation, he's like, how many of you guys really are down for the, who, who Who here is really a Raider? Because all I've seen is you guys you guys had some a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of success in 2016. And then you came out and you expected everybody to lay down for you and it didn't happen. And then when it didn't happen, you guys all all just laid down yourselves. That's 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 what mm-hmm. I think. That's what I think. I think he comes in fired up and he says, "Prove, yeah, prove yeah. me different." Sounds right. I just, I just I'm like just to... saying. I, I'm just saying. There's a lot of fans out there that that what the, my narrative. That's the narrative that they have, and I just wanted to, to get the question answered. Yeah, that's good for those fans. Yeah, that's good. You know what I mean? I just like the chase that uh, John's looking for fuckers, eh? <laughs> <laughs> looking for some fuckers, eh? It's like you're like my my you're like your, the, the brothers the older brother's friend. Hey, fucker, where's your mom keep the snacks? <laughs> you know that's a question I ask on the regular. Dog. <laughs> Damn, bro. <laughs> Damn, bro. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh man, damn! Good shit, though. Oh man, okay, man. Y'all crazy. No, but you know what? Don't um, tell you right though. I just wanted to get that out there because I think that's some. You know, it's a nice little conversation to have. No, I, two sports knowledgeable fans. You know what I mean? Not yeah. that I agree with what the fuck I said, <laughs> but I'm just saying that narrative is out there. No, I feel you. you. Know I, I that feel narrative you. is out there, and I think it's yeah. true. I think it's so, true to, to a certain extent. I think it's true, right? I think I think you're right. If if Gruden isn't here, mm-hmm. Dario probably is forgiven <laughs> and given another shot, and then those players ain't ain't necessarily gone right yeah i mean that's um, a that's a big if i but mean where are we though but where are we that i mean there's a lot of there's a lot of well, hold on hold on we we love we won four games last year no uh, yeah so if we won four games last year with jack del rio is he still here in 2019 i don't think so, so well let's just say that the yeah. problem that he did was hire todd downing but anyway we're going back too far <laughs> yeah it's, yeah, it's yeah, over yeah, yeah, and yeah, all yeah. that shit didn't happen yeah, 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 yeah. everybody want to say we brought in marshawn lynch and that was a mistake we should have kept latavius murray i mean there's a whole lot of things that people could say yeah. that we could have did but at the end of the day we we stuck with john gruden and this staff right now and the decisions they made and they they making the decisions they have and we still don't have a defensive end to replace Khalil Mack, so you know. Well, let's just see what happens at the end of whatever they decisions they made. You know what I'm saying? And I'm down with those decisions. I'm a Raider fan. I'm gonna be down with every decision you make stupidly, like I've been for the last 50 years or whatever. So I mean, I'm just saying. My point is, is that I got an opinion. Yeah. You know and. Yep. Whether it matter or not is here, you know. So, yeah. Okay, man. Hell of a conversation. It was good having you on, bro. Hell yeah. And uh, next time you come down, let me know in advance, and I'll try to whip up something extra special for you. There dog. you go. You there you go. Mean? You know what I mean? Hey, man. I'm looking for some more of them, them damn chicken wings, man. And, <laughs> on and on the, deck. In, the, in that that fryer that you made them in, on man. Deck. With that hot sauce. Easy. Man, that shit was on hit. Easy. Shut Bro, up. that shit was on hit. Best Shh. chicken wings I had better than any restaurant. Ooh. Salsa that Che made Ooh. better than any restaurant For sure. I ever had. For sure. Then that's no and I done ate a whole bunch of salsa because I eat Mexican food like a motherfucker. There you you go. know what I'm saying? And I done ate a whole bunch of different salsas. Pureed, uh uh Chico de Gallo. Yeah. 
or whatever the fuck you want to call it. You know what I'm saying? I done ate them all. Yours was pretty good, my bro. Top notch, actually. Hell you know yeah. what I'm saying? And those Thank chicken you. wings was good. I Gotta see. have some more of that shit. Hell so yeah. when I come down there, man, make sure y'all got that shit for me. I when got I show you. Up. Hey, I got you. Chicken wings, easy, bro. <laughs> Give me the heads up early, bro, easy. and I'll make sure I get it done. That salsa's fire. I'll second that. That's the best salsa I ever had. Um, Thank you. And Mr. Dolores, close second. Ms. Yeah, Mr. Dolores makes some good salsa. That's a good salsa, man. Yeah. Hey, Kane, man. Get down here, bro. We miss you, dude. Hey, so when 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 y'all when y'all want me to come down? I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I think we're trying to record next Monday, which is Memorial Day. So if you can get down here for that, if not, the weekend. Oh, after you know day. what? I'm on. I'm on call for work next week. Oh. You remember I told you? 25th, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 26, 27. Yeah. I'm on call for work that weekend. But I can still do the show, you know, like now, but yeah. I can't. Let's, let's, I got to. They, they might. But you know what? Motherfucker, if y'all call me to work, it's going to cost y'all double time. There you Woo! go. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, <laughs> fuck with me. <laughs> call me to work. And you know what? And you know what? Monday is Memorial Day, and that's when all the restaurants and shit be open. And I, I work in San Francisco. Mm. It's going to be rats running around in somebody's shit on somebody's <laughs> route. It's going to be roaches sighted. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be all kind of shit going on. And somebody, oh, yeah, most definitely, bro. We get calls all the time. And if I go out to a stop, it's sixty five dollars an hour mm. coming to Kane's motherfucking poppin'. And hey, guess move. what? I'm coming from it's gonna take me an hour and a half to get there because I'm coming from Cocker and it's a motherfucking uh holiday weekend. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be traffic on the oh. freeway to go to San Francisco. We it's gonna out. take me an hour to get to San Francisco, an hour and a half to get there and then I'm going to spend four or five hours trying to take care of the It's going to take me another fuck with me and I'm going to get you for 10 hours <laughs> and I'm going to get you for, I'm going to have me a $1,500 a day let's do this <laughs> I'm ready for you motherfuckers let's go you know what I'm saying I know how to make a sad day into a happy day fuck there it I'm going to call and I'm going to make it call me motherfucker y'all got a problem yeah, you know what I mean yeah. you're going to have to pay me baby <laughs> get that money yeah. dog get that money <laughs> get that loot Luchini. There you go, Luchini pouring through the sky. <laughs> Let's get rich. What? Hey, I'll tell you this right now before before we let King go. Maybe King can back me up on this. If you got a, if you have a restaurant in a metro area, there you go. You have rats and or roaches. Period. You got them. In San Francisco, it's how you call control crane pest control. I'm there. I'm I'll just, be here and it's going to cost you some money. I'm just they gonna saying. They're going to charge you. I'm just saying every restaurant you eat at in any metro area has a rat or roach problem. Yeah. It's just a matter of are you controlling it? Can right. you keep it outside your building? Right. Can you keep it in the dumpster? Right. And once it gets in the kitchen, you got a real problem. Yeah. Uh, every restaurant. That. Every restaurant. Go out back of your favorite restaurant. You'll be surprised. <laughs> you'll be shocked. <laughs> But take a peek in the kitchen on your way to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And hopefully you're not surprised. <laughs> yeah. You just gotta keep that problem outdoors. It's yeah. a fact, man. It's a fact. Hey man, you know what's you know what's fucked up? It's hard for me to go eat somewhere, man. I'm at the oh, restaurant I'm sure. today. I'm sure. And we sitting in the motherfucking window and I see flies. And I'm like, damn, they got flies flying around there. I'm an exterminator, bro. That's that's just like me. I'm an exterminator. I've been doing this shit for twenty something years. So I'm sitting down, and I'm like Damn, there's flies flying around this motherfucker. Damn, got no fly light in this motherfucker. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So we sitting in the window. We sitting in the window, and I'm like, fuck, let's move over here because the flies won't be coming into the window. I'm just saying, restaurants, do your thing, man. You yeah. don't know who you got up in the motherfucking restaurant. You know what I'm saying? You can have an exterminator. You can have somebody that know what the fuck they doing up in there. And I'm telling y'all, if you got flies and shit flying around in your motherfucking restaurant, you got a problem. Call me, and I can help you. Am you go. Amityville Horror up in that At- bitch. <laughs> right, flies are a bad sign, man. Flies mean Satan. That's what flies mean. The you know, first thing I do when I go to the restaurant, especially with my lady, I go straight to the bathroom. I peek in your kitchen, and I look in the bathroom. If the bathroom ain't right, get the fuck out of there right now. I'm just telling you that. I've come back from the bathroom before. I told my lady, we got to go. Why? We just, let's go. When you walk out, I'll be like, that, yeah. that place ain't right. Yeah. And you keep your bathroom right. That's the first step towards me sitting down in your restaurant. There you go. Okay, man. It's been great. We got to let you go. But uh, if not next weekend, let's get you down here the weekend after that. We'll keep in touch, bro. We'll make it happen. I'll make some wings. It'll be popping. It'll be wing extravaganza in this mug. And I will leave you with this. 
Flies ain't your only problem at a restaurant. Oh, no. You just don't know. <laughs> Shoot. I love y'all, brothers. I'll talk to y'all next week. I love you yeah, too, bro. Brother. Love you too, bro. Take care. All right, man. All right. All right. Go ready. Peace, Peace out, dog. <laughs> oh, that was a good one, man. That was a good Kane's Corner. And Kane's Corner is always good, but every once in a while we get a classic. That was a classic right there. That was a good conversation. Yeah, man. It's always good to get off topic, too. Hell yeah. I mean, I don't mind. I don't know how our listeners feel about it, but I don't mind at all. <laughs> that's what this next podcast is about. <laughs> Crows and Stay tuned. Stay tuned. We, we got to gotta start live streaming that soon, but man, that shit pops off hella late. So yeah, man. It's, we'll it gets rough. Up. I don't know how many people are, are willing to to uh, to stay up with us, man, for that one. Bobby's trying to make me fancy. He says I only eat at five-star restaurants. Bro, that ain't true, man. Most of these five stars, a lot of these fancy restaurants and fancy towns are way overrated. Places like Monterey, uh, Capitola, a lot of whack bunk restaurants. Dog. There you go. Give me a nice hole in the wall any day. It don't matter how many stars you have, man. It's just matter who you got cooking matter in the of, kitchen, dog. Matter of fact, Bobby, that's a racist comment, dog. <laughs> you saying a mom and pop restaurant can't be delicious? That's a racist comment, dog. You saying because I'm white? <laughs> Bruh. I'm going to let you off the hook for that, Bobby. I'm gonna, and I, I understand I have not co- You know, I had Bobby over here for a barbecue. Bobby ended up barbecuing the whole damn meal. I'm so. <laughs> I had everything set up, pre prepped, everything ready to go. How come Bobby was in the chat talking about the only thing you giving him is a cup of noodles, bro? I don't know, bro. I don't know, bro. Come on, Bobby. I don't know. Don't be played, Bobby. I made you some table side guacamole, Bobby. Oh, you, man. Come on, man. <laughs> come on. Come don't, on, Bobby. I made you some fire ass tea, bro. Don't don't act like that. <laughs> there you go. Then it shoots you to another dimension, there homie. There you go. Uh, let's let's get these calls up here, man. <laughs> By the way, while I have the caller screen open, um, the phone lines are open. So if you want to, if you're listening now on the live stream and you want to give us a phone call, go ahead and pick up the number. Uh, oh, pick, pick up the line. 408-909-7533. 408-909-PJFF. Uh, let's start off here in the 719. This is a two-parter. Y'all can't get your thoughts across. This might be a three-parter. <laughs> Hardcore Raider, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what's good, bro. <laughs> but that's nine minutes of phone call, homie. <laughs> you guys got to wrap this shit up. Wrap it up, B. I'm saying. Let's see. Let's see. What up, my Chella Pillagers? This is Hardcore Raider calling from Donkeyville. I'm drinking at Chella's. You drinking at Chella's. We all drinking some motherfucking Chella's, man. What is going on? <laughs> all right. So, uh, you know. I want to fucking talk about some real deep shit, man, some hardcore Raider talk. So, uh, you know, I always tell people, you got to know where you're at, where you've been, and where you're going. So I want to rewind time a little bit with all these fucking chump-ass motherfuckers that just won't let up, man. I need the season to get here. Hopefully we can start shutting some of this down, but uh, I guess we'll see how it goes when the season starts. But, um, you know, uh, we got Chucky back, man, and it just seemed like, we were all on cloud nine, hyped up when he got hired. I wasn't claiming Super Bowl or nothing. I know maybe some Raider fans were jacked up, and then it was just hate after hate, man, just, like, getting kicked in the nuts time and time again. And, uh, you know, if we rewind time back when he was our coach, I mean, the whole way he got – the whole reason he got Chucky was, like, the last two minutes of the game where we were losing games and shit. He'd be all pissed off. But, um, you know, he, he really brought the Raiders from being irrelevant and being really shitty for a long time into being a really good competitor. Um, however, uh, even in those years in the, you know, late 90s, early 2000s, uh, before he was traded, the, uh, you know, the media wasn't giving us no love. I mean, you know, so we were getting hated even when, even when we were winning. And I've, I've dealt with it my whole life. You think you'd get used to it, but it just never fell some, bigger fucking jackass comes by and you know you're like dude like what the fuck man so anyways uh probably have to call back a couple times but uh just hear me out so you know i fought 15 years for green to come back uh the reason why i fought hard for him uh i don't think he's the best coach out there i'll be honest i don't don't think he is i think he's a really good coach but i think he's the best coach for the raiders to return to dominance so uh you know, to be a Raider coach, you got to be tough. You got to be dogfight, fucking tough, because you're gonna get hated, uh, no matter what the record is, no matter what the score is. You're gonna get hated. That just goes to the territory of being a Raider. That's why I uh, wanted him to come back for so long. 
you know, a lot of people and, uh, social media and, uh, you know, the so-called experts, which they aren't experts. I mean, let's just fucking get that shit right right now. You know what I'm saying? Shannon Sharp, donkey lover, Raider hater. Nick Wright, fucking Queese fan, Raider hater. Uh, Ka- uh, Colin Coward, uh, yeah, he's a fucking coward. He's a Raider hater. <laughs> They're all fucking Raider haters, man. Like, none of them, are, like, give the Raiders, like, any love What up? This is Hardcore Raider again. All right, so obviously the media hates us. I mean, some of the shit's like, uh, I mean, it's pretty obvious, you know. Um, anyways, uh, you know, so the media hates us. And, you know, so last season after, you know, Gruden got hired, uh, a lot of Raider fans, especially the Mac trade, we were all, like, just struck, you know, and the media just gobbled that shit up, man. And, you know, a lot of even Raiders fans were hating on the team, you know. I'll be honest, I called out a lot of Raiders fans and shit because it pissed me off, man. I've won a Gruden back for like 15 years, man, 15 plus years, just because uh, he has unfinished business with us, you know. And I truly believe that had Gruden not got uh, shit canned by Davis, traded, whatever the fuck you want to call it, uh, had he not left, we would have two, maybe three rings, uh, including the game against the Patriots that we got screwed, the uh, he essentially got cheated by the fucking refs. So, anyways, you know, uh, that that's important to me, you know, to have a coach that has that dogfight. No coach since Cruden has had that dogfight, in my opinion. Uh, so, that being said, um, you know, to me it's a psychological warfare. It, it's a battle for our fandom. It's a battle for our team, you know, and... I asked you guys a question last week to ask you, you know, is there anything we can do as fans? And on game day, yeah, hell fucking right, man. Stand up, man. Let your voice be heard. And, uh, you know, uh, be as loud as you can. Absolutely. But I think there's even stuff we can do before that point. You know, the the players, you know, they say they don't see this shit or whatever, but they do, man. I'm telling you, they fucking do. Whether it's, like, media stuff or YouTube stuff, like, the word gets around, man. They're not going to talk about it whether they're allowed to or not, they're going to be professionals, man. They have to get a paycheck, you know, and they have to go out and do their job. But, you know, imagine if you told your kid every day, or not even every day, just, you know, your son or daughter, once a week you told them they were a piece of shit and they were trash. Every week for a fucking (laughs) six months. Imagine how fucked up psychologically your kid would be if you told your kid they were fucked up. It'd be a pretty messed up thing to, to do, so don't do it. But you know what I'm saying? Uh, the point is, is, um, you know, to build morale, man, you gotta, you gotta support the team, support the players, you know, get them motivated. And that's what I've been doing. Sometimes I'll copy and paste the same shit. But what do I have to say is good fucking shit, man. Oh, Raider fans, to stand the fuck up, unite together, and let's fight off these haters, man. Let's come in fucking swinging. I don't go out starting fights. But I'll tell you what, you come at me swinging, dude, let's fucking go. I I don't give a fuck, man. So, back in all these haters and shit, man, we got to keep feeding this team. You know, keep feeding this team with positivity. I, I don't care if we don't have the best defensive uh, ends or the best defensive line. Here we go. This hardcore Raider, <laughs> the Raider Ramble. I'm almost fucking done. I know I'm rambling. Maybe it's the Chellas. It's the real Raider Ramble know. right so, here. <laughs> Shut up, Mario. A lot of hate going on. And, uh, <laughs> you know, the way that w- what we need to do as fans is just support this team. we got to support the team, man, no matter how much hate is coming at us. Because right now, it, this is like Rocky, man. This is behind the scenes. Come, come uh, game day and shit, that's the product of what's being put in right now. Right now is where you motivate the players. Right now is where we get them pumped up because right now is when they're getting ready for the game day, you know. <clears throat> so we as, as Raider Nation have to be that, that uh, you know, extra man to support this team. I'll share a little story when I was in the Army. Uh, make it quick. My, my knee was messed up before make I joined. Quick. I knew it was messed up. Too uh, late, bro. I pretty much dislocated it. Had to have my chiropractor pop it back in place, riding my motorcycle and shit, but... Going to basic training, my knee swells up the size of a grapefruit. I got, you know, 53 swinging dicks in basic training, putting in bets that I wasn't going to graduate because my knee was so bad. Where are we going? Um, I still ran. I never gave up, but I couldn't run as fast as some of the other guys. So, um, you know, if it ends up bad enough, they'll, they'll 
do what's called recycle you, which is pretty much like prison, and I don't have time to go into that, but essentially your ass might be stuck there for six to eight months in prison. So you don't want to be that fucking guy. Um, but all those haters that were betting on me and shit <laughs> and cracking jokes, I use that shit. Because come the end of basic training, we had to do our PT test. I pushed my way to the front, and I'm not the biggest guy. I got a big heart, man. Uh, had the nickname Rudy in high school and shit for a reason. And uh, pushed my way to the front. We started running. I'm usually not, like, the first guy in a lot of things, you know. Uh, I'm up there in the top guys, but not not the top guy. And we get to the halfway point, one, one mile, and nobody's fucking passed me in my platoon. So I'm like, fuck, man, nobody's passed me. And my knee is like... Like, my knee had healed, like, the last two weeks. So I'm like, over the last two weeks, I, we haven't done much running because we are out in the field. And I was like, damn, dude, like, I can fucking do this shit. Ain't nobody passing me. I used all that motivation, all that hate. And I ended up running, the, it was like a fucking 12, 32 mile. And uh, <clears throat> nobody in my platoon passed me. And, you know, when I got to the finish line, I was sprinting. Me and another guy in my platoon, we were racing each other. And I beat his ass by, like, half a second. But... The point is, man, I used that shit, and I rose the fuck up. And every motherfucker that doubted me, guess who fucking got first? This motherfucker. So, like Tupac said, fuck all these motherfuckers, man. I don't give a fuck. It's Raider Nation, One Nation, 2019, Year of Redemption, Raiders will... <laughs> oh, bro. Damn, you need close? Damn. Damn, man. That was pretty solid for three calls, though. It was solid was for three calls. It. I like hey, that. Man. Good call, hardcore. He was going hardcore, man. Yeah. Now, I wonder if he calls back next week and says, like, man, I don't remember what I said. <laughs> Just played. Here's a tip. <laughs> Just played. Man. Hardcore Raider, if you ever call in again and you say 53 swinging dicks one more time, <laughs> never again, bro. <laughs> No, but that was good, man. That was good. Yeah, man. Hey. Uh, you had the chat fired up over here. Point being, fuck all these people, man. They hate <laughs> yeah, that was a direct quote That's from the Tupac, point. bro. That's the point. Tupac, dog. <laughs> we got a plaque of Tupac in the studio at work, and it's got two bullets in it. And the kids are always like, are those the real bullets? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> nah, dude, we got that plaque of Barry S. Fuck out Come of here. Come on, <laughs> But yeah, all right, okay. All right, hardcore Raider. I feel it, though. I feel it. You, you got to feel the fire, right? Hell yeah. Uh, I think uh, somebody was saying in the chat earlier, too, um, you know, I, that's what Gruden's been targeting, man, guys that want to be Raiders. You heard Cleland say it at the Combine. He always wanted to be a Raider. Yeah. And what it means to be a Raider, not just I want to wear silver and black, looking for Raiders in terms of the spirit of what it means to be a Raider. Absolutely. Something that's going to completely sell out for the game of football. Yeah. And... uh, uh I, f- I feel it. I can smell what you're cooking, bro. Yeah, man. Let's go to the uh, 760. You, already, you know who that is. You know who it is. What up, guys? Raider Nation. A WAPO. It's WAP. Man. This KO interview has got people fucked up. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. You know, KO complaining that John Gruden says something to him and didn't follow through. Listen, KO, if you didn't want to get traded to another team, you would have fixed your broken ass two years ago in 2017 when you decided to stop being the fucking KO, smash the motherfuckers down on the floor type of O-lineman. He ain't the same. He's downtrending. I don't blame him for getting rid of him. Some things change, man. I mean, I'm sure he had a plan for Khalil Mack, Amari Cooper, and all these people, but they didn't show up. And you know what happens when you don't show up to a man that's trying to get you to prove how much you work? He's on to the next show, buddy. I'm sorry. I don't feel sorry for KO. I really don't. And I this making John Gruden into a bad guy, all right, that's cool, you know. I'm tired of the Raiders be paying people that haven't done shit. Because that's what we do for a long time. We've been paying bums to be on the team. I'm tired of bums being on the team. I'm tired of broken ass O linemen on the team. Get their asses off. They were great for a while. They ain't doing shit now. That's all I got to say. I think people need to chill out on the John Gruden 
shit talking because, you know, 2019 is a big year. Let's see what they could do. You know, it's the Oakland Raiders. It's not any one person that makes the fucking team. It's the damn whole in general. Y'all some crazy ass people thinking that just because of one person gone out of season, but oh, KO's not on the whole line. We're done. Oh well, that's me. Well, I did my little rant. See you guys later. Bye. <laughs> I'm laughing at this chat. Talk. Let them know, Wop. Yeah. Yeah, this chat's out of hand right now. <laughs> this, chat is, this chat's really out of hand, Doc. <laughs> I can't even say what's going on in the chat right now. No, that's that's strictly uh, for the crow's nest. Yeah. <laughs> Tune in. <laughs> Woo, boy. Oh, man. There's a reason why they don't serve nuts on an airplane anymore. <laughs> hey. hey, Wapo, man. Good call, man. Set these fools straight, man. Well, that's one thing we can count on with uh, with Wapo, man. Yeah, Wapo. Yeah. You know, he comes he comes, comes straight, comes strong. I think he handled that better than we did last. We talked about the KO interview last week. I think Wap, man, Wapo, get out here, bro. Yeah, yeah. We got an NPC for you right here, dog. There you go. We play the thunder sound effect a lot just to kind of goof around, but yeah. Wapo's the only caller with the sound effect, dude. Yeah, it's true. You know what I mean? He calls in every week, man. It's, hot, it's, it's fire, bro. And Wapo, he'd be calling, he'd be making the rounds. He, calls he all, does, all man. The shows, so he does. I, I heard him on uh, Q's podcast. Yep. If you don't listen to Locked On Raiders, you're missing out. Like, like I said, dude, I'm, do not sweat competition, bro. No, this is a community. We're all Raider fans. It's all love. Definitely check out Q. Definitely check Absolutely. out check out Raider Fan Radio. You know what I mean? Yeah. Check out all these different shows, bro. But check ours out first. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> I got him. Uh, this is an un- unknown caller, bro. There you go. Unknown caller. Unknown caller. What up, Kenny? What up, Jay? There you Ooh. go. Forever and a day. This is G Pop. Yeah. I've uh, been very interested in hearing everything you've had to say. I listen to the Daily Locked On podcast. So I listen to that Coincio Assembly interview. Very interesting. I uh, don't respect the man for what he's saying. I, he was good when he played, but he's this, this trash to us now. I believe, but I totally respect all this process that John Gruden and now Mike Bayak has ventured us through. I love this. I cannot wait for Raider football on opening night, Monday night. I cannot wait for us to kick the hell out of the Broncos. Uh, just win, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. G Paul, he's, he's going to keep going. Okay. Sorry, I had to call back, guys. G Paul again. I had to. Cut out quick because, you know, the dog's issue as normal. Barking and whatnot. I <laughs> uh, want to say everything is going great. I think right now we should be interested in grabbing Kyle Rudolph. He's sitting out there. Yeah. I uh, doesn't want to. He just thinks he's taking up. He wants to take, I have to take too much of a pay cut. Minnesota, I think we should go look for him. Uh, and this Adamacon Sioux stuff right now. Uh, let's just wait on it and see, you know, if he goes at a lower price. Maybe we'll get him for, like I say, a steal. But let's trust in all this process. Like I said before, I love the way all this is going. I mean, this is looking like Al Davis's old school Raiders are looking on defense, defense. See how much better we can get. Uh, I love it. All right, Jeepa out. Yeah. Okay, Google, stop. Uh, it's good to hear from you again, G. Paul. Thank yeah, you. absolutely, man. You and we and you brought that up last week, right? You yeah. asked, you were like, "Hey, man, we haven't heard from G. Paul in a, in a while." So it's good to hear from him, man. Yeah, and Jalen reached out. His son had reached out to me in the uh, in the DM. He said, "You know, G. Paul's doing good. It's just laying low because it's the off season." Yeah. So, so we were right. We were right. It's good to hear that he's doing well. Uh, G. Paul, man, thanks for calling in, man. Hell yeah! I always look forward to his calls during the regular season. Yeah, because uh, he keeps it real. But um, you can tell he's been a Raider fan a long time. Yeah. But he he always has a positive spin too. Absolutely, and absolutely, I, we can relate to that, right? And we need a little bit of that, man. Sometimes we, we need a little bit of that. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> shit, bro. You're being sometimes too we nice. Need a little, we need a little more of that. <laughs> uh, oh man! But um, all right. So let's see here. Let's go to the the two oh nine. Man, this this chat is still on fire. If you're if you're not following along, 
uh, with us on the live stream. I, I definitely encourage you to do so. I understand a lot of you guys live in a house with children, so <laughs> I get that. Uh, we're definitely definitely uh, the X-rated Raiders podcast. I will say that. Um, if you're offended by 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 our language and maybe our sense of humor, I get that. I get that. I respect that. But uh, hey, man, we are who we are, Doc. <laughs> Can't change that. Man. Once, once the Raiders gear goes on, it it all comes out. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we, we we'll try to keep we'll try to keep it on the up and up. But yeah. um, you know, appreciate you, G. Paul. Uh, let's check this out here. It's uh, we're going to the two hundred nine. This is the Central Valley, I believe. Modesto, Modesto, there you go. Stockton. <laughs> you know, yeah, the two hundred nine. Manteca. Hey guys, J. Rob. I figured I'd give you guys a call to talk about some draft. Um, first things first, uh, with Cleveland Farrell, I'm not going to lie. J-Rob, original pillager. There you go. Not official pillager, original, original. pillager. Yeah. Respect for PJ4F.com. Casey, I haven't said it in a while, and we're going to get to you, J-Rob, right now, because I like J-Rob. We, we've, we've partied with him. He was out there at Ricky's. J-Rob's cool. He's been at the tailgates. Uh, PJ4F.com, that's the blog. That's where everything started. Before the Hell podcast, yeah. we had the blog. There is a chat section. It's at the bottom of, of, the, of every post, right? So if you want to jump in the fray, just go to the latest post, which will be this podcast. This is where we've basically only been posting podcasts. And J-Rob has written a couple articles for us. Um, just click on the, the most recent article. Scroll down to the bottom. Make yourself a little discuss profile if you don't have one already. Uh, it's a pretty common chat format. And uh, jump in, man. Um, a lot of Raider fans in there. Yeah. It's wild. It gets real crazy, man. If you think this chat's crazy, yeah, <laughs> we we weeded go out. devil in that tr- <laughs> go devil in that chat, man. We we weeded out some of the more wild ones, yeah. But um, definitely check it out, man. If you if you're not into like Twitter and Facebook and all that, social media is not your thing. But you still want to like jump on and, and talk to some folks, you definitely hit up our message board. Yeah, man, check that out. It's yeah. it's pretty wild in there. All right, let's go back to J Rob here. I was one of those people that was kind of freaking out when the pick was first announced. Um, but after kind of thinking about it, after the fact, I kind of see what they were getting at. Um, everybody was talking about like our pass rush numbers and how bad they were. And because of that, people thought, oh, we need a pass rusher, pass rusher, pass rusher. But the thing about Cleveland Farrell is, is that he actually makes you better on both sides of the ball. And I think that's what they were looking for. Do you like to play the run and can give you at least, you know, eight sacks can kind of affect, not, not give you the whole, you know, 15 sack year kind of thing. Um, I can see that taking out four people kind of freak out a little bit, but I think, you know, they were trying to trade back, but you got to have another person there willing to come up for them. And uh, if that doesn't happen, then you got to take him where you're at if you don't think that he's going to last to 24. Now, another thing, too, is Josh Jacobs. Everybody keeps saying that Josh K- Jacobs was a reach and we could have got him later and this, this, and that. The thing about Josh Jacobs is, is that he's just a f- perfect scheme fit for what we do. Again, makes the – team better in multiple ways on passing downs, blocking, running the ball. You can play. So if anything, he's probably my favorite pick in the draft just because of that perfect scheme fit. And sometimes, you know, you, you reach for things like that. The same thing with John uh, Abram, right? He's a guy where he makes all, all positions in the secondary better because you can kick KJ over to free safety. You can join her down to slot corner where they're probably better fit. And Abram's more of like a, you know, in the box, can kind of play the run thing, kind of like KJ did. But, you know, it allows KJ to be better on the back end. So uh, the whole theme of the draft, to me, was that, you know, we just got better in different areas in our three picks. They, they you know, they helped out more than just what their position is. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy with it after kind of looking back on it a couple of days and relaxing. It's, it's, it's a good draft all the way around. So just figured give you guys a call, talk about it, see what you guys thought. All right, guys. Peace. Yeah, good call, man. Again, realistic call. We talked a lot about the overreaction towards Cleveland. I called myself out, even though Cleveland was my pick. But, you know, I, I settled down within, I think, what, like 10 minutes. I think I settled down, 10, 15 minutes. And I think J-Rob actually was one of the people. Uh, I might be confused because a lot of people were texting me. But um, and that's, that's not a humble brag. It was draft day. People were texting everybody everywhere. Yeah. Um, J-Rob, had hit, I think, hit me up. He was like, what were your thoughts? And I was like, ah, oh, it's a bit of a reach at four. But and I kind of came back down to earth. I was like, you know what? That was their guy. It's on the board. They got him there. Maybe they tried to trade back. And then, as he said, we found out they did. And it wasn't there for him. So we got our guy. And Cleveland might have gone right after that, dog. The, the draft board is not dictated by beat writers. Right. It's dictated by NFL general managers. 
Yeah. And there's a big difference there. This is the reason why the, 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 the NFL Hall of Fame shouldn't be dictated by beat writers either, man. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Also true. Shots uh, fired. So, shots <laughs> hey, <laughs> fired. <laughs> um, uh, the uh, what was I going to say? Oh, um, somebody pointed. I think this might have been a Twitter. Might have been in our own chat. I, I don't remember. But somebody was saying, "Hey, it, had Mayock not been a GM, and he was back in the broadcast booth doing his mock drafts, and he had Cle- Cleveland up there, how would people have felt? Right? You know what I mean? How would boards have moved? How would general opinion have been swayed? It's true. If Mayock was on there, you know, true. banging his drum for Cleveland Farrell in the broadcast booth, absolutely. But the mouth was shut tight. Yeah. He was like, get the fuck out of my face. And they, they, I ain't about to tell you nothing about my draft. That was a straight poker game, dog. Yep. I was. Yep. Yeah, good call, J-Rob. Call in more, dog. Original Pillager. We need more of y'all on here, dude. I know some of them. Some of them, hey, I'll put it out there right now. Some of them thought, they've gone Hollywood. <laughs> fuck out of here, man. How are we Hollywood, man? We still <laughs> the same studio we've been recording this bitch. <laughs> Yo, I'm Shit. still sitting here on the same brown shag carpet. <laughs> yeah, <son. laughs> it was day one, man. You know, we ain't Hollywood. Nah, man. but we, hey, y'all, not y'all need to start calling in, man, like yeah. you used to, man. I've been on the blog more lately. I've, I've been carving out some time on my lunch break and something. Miss Miss Homer, man. Miss hearing Homer ah, call in, man. Big time, big time. You know what I mean? And yeah. all these guys, man, Johnny, and you know what, man. Yeah. All y'all cats, man. Three hundred three is the only one that's still kind of. Still kind of hanging in there, man. For sure. You know what I mean? Well, the regular season will roll around. We'll see these cats again. Yeah, yeah. We'll see it again. Um, all right, last call. It's uh, from the 3 6 Oh, It's your boy, Pete. Kenny J. Kane. What's up, Pillages? This is Pete. How we doing? Hey, uh, so kind of a slow week in football news. We're getting into that season. Starting to get a little, uh, little down, but we have uh, some new scouts. Dwayne Douglas. Formerly of the Philadelphia Eagles, we were really praised for this move by uh, Matt Miller of Bleacher Report, and uh, basically saying that that was the guy that worked under the guy that has made these last two Super Bowl runs happen with the Eagles, and that we should be fortunate. And then did you guys see that we hired the Cowboys guys? That makes me wonder, man. I'm a little curious. I wonder if they're going to be brought in to observe our offensive line because the Cowboys have been so good at drafting O-line lately. I hate to talk about the fucking Cowboys right now. But I'm like, wait a minute. Are we bringing in some specialists in comparison to last year? Maybe someone to say, hey, Tom Cable isn't doing his job right and we should fire him? I don't know. We'll see. But either way, I like the moves. I want to know what you guys think about them. And uh, this is another news. Completely unrelated to the Raiders, really. But it is in some way, shape, or form. Is uh, Did you guys see... Daniel Jeremiah might be linked. Daniel Jeremiah is of the NFL Network, also a draft analyst, and filled in Mike Mayock's role after he left for our, for, to be our general manager. They're saying that whomever becomes the Jets' next GM will bring Daniel Jeremiah along with him <laughs> as a head of pro personnel, and how, uh, oh, well, that's kind of crazy. And I'm like, nah, go ahead, yeah. Don't give us credit. You just fucking ripped us off. Everybody's ripping us off now. Now they already think it's a great idea, even though it happened six months ago. Know what I mean? Yep. Don't give us credit where credit's due, but if it happens, just know the Raiders invented that shit a while back, and I don't want to hear anyone talk about, like, oh, well, look at you. Who saw this? Shut up. Stupid national media. Stupid Max Kellerman. Ah. Stupid fucking Fox Sports. <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> on top of that. And one more thing. This is also now very Raiders-related or anything else like that, but, uh, Tay, did you watch the fights last night? You see that Deontay Wilder boy? Wait, he knocked his ass out. He's six foot seven, two plus. I say that we sign him for a defensive end. <laughs> and if he comes in the building, just give him whatever he asks for. So, you know, he doesn't pop people's heads off and shit. That's a Raider all day, if you ask me. All right, y'all. Have a good one. Thanks for having me on. Peace. That's a good take right there. <laughs> it is a good take. Um, yeah, Wilder, man. Well, we, we yeah. talked about that. We talked about that earlier, man. We talked about that earlier, man. Look, the, the Daniel Jeremiah Woo. thing right now, it's just smoke. I don't, I don't really know enough about the dude to have a solid take on him, but I'll weigh in. First of all, we don't know what we got Mayock yet. It looks real good. It looks nice. It feels good. Yeah. The pragmatic moves, a lot of value, You know, squeezed a lot out of this draft, but we don't know yet. He asked me again at the end of the season whether I'm excited about Mike Mayock. Right now, I feel, I feel good about it. Right. I think we all do, but we always feel good. We got to right? see it perform on the field, right? I mean, that's that's the end. That's where the buy-in finally mm-hmm. takes hold of us, right? Yeah. Um, we got to see success, man. We got to see something for us to say, okay, they made the right moves, right? 
here here's here's what I'm waiting for. Okay. Mike Mayock's a general manager. Mm-hmm. When Mel Kuyper becomes a GM <laughs> of the Baltimore <laughs> Ravens, <laughs> call me. <laughs> call me. Oh, that, man. That's going out on a limb right there. Todd, Todd, Todd. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't really answer your question there. But, I mean, the Jeremiah thing hasn't happened yet. It, it, is it ripping us off? I don't know. You know, I, is there something to be said about a broadcast guy? I'm that, I mean, I'm not just saying a broadcast guy, but, you know, broadcast dude that has some smarts. Sure. I mean, they get a bird's eye view of the league. They get a peek inside every organization, every locker room. Is there an advantage to that? Eh, sure. But can they handle the day-to-day job? We'll find out. You know, Mike's got a friend in John, which definitely helped the transition process. But the Jets right now, the Jets are a hot mess. I'm reading that Leonard Williams might be on the trade block. You know, I don't know. It's the Jets, dog. It's the Jets. <laughs> They're never going to be nothing. Put put money on that. All right. Put money on that. All right. The, 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 hey. Go to Vegas. Put money on. Jets are never going to be nothing. Hey, <laughs> Look Chad, for that bit. Chad Pennington's not walking through that door. <laughs> <laughs> Chad hey, Pennington. Curtis Martin's not walking through that door. Oh, man. Yeah. That guy was by far their best player in the last how many years, right? Mark Sanchez might walk through that door. <laughs> and you should be worried about that. Some people have been talking about Mark Sanchez looking a little a little, a little old, a little wasted, man. A little... It's all them damn nitrates from the hot dogs, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Doug, you just sit on that bench eating them fucking hot dogs, Doug. <laughs> you need to chill out on them processed foods. <laughs> yeah, so. That motherfucker goes through a hot dog. He eats that fucking popcorn. <laughs> Shit, man. And he earned it in that game, sadly. Probably sipping some chelas, too. Sadly. Uh, I'm just trying to keep it real, you know what I mean? I'll keep it real. <laughs> was that was you brought that, that one back? Is that Kawhi Leonard's laugh, bro? <laughs> oh, <laughs> sounded like Kawhi Leonard's laugh, bro. Kawhi and Leonard I just saw that. the Raptors one tonight, so okay, all right, all right. We so was it two and two? It's two and one, two and one. That yeah. was the first win. Their first one, yeah, That's it was right. the first win. Yeah, yeah, Milwaukee had won the first two. Yeah. They should have won for yeah. the game one though. Raptors were up that first game, yeah, and the, the last game was a blowout though. Milwaukee. Yeah, Milwaukee. <laughs> okay, Alice Cooper. <laughs> hey, uh, it's time to do some shout outs, bro. Yeah, shout outs. Let's do some shout outs. Big shout outs on Twitter. Uh, shout out to Knight Raider, Stuart Silber, Chris Mike Zoo. Shout out to Nick Webb, Oaktown Born, James Raiders, Raiders Rocks, Eric, Eileen Raiders, Bob the Mob, David Raiders, Manish Raiders. First of all, I smell shenanigans. Because a lot of these uh, Manish Raiders, David Raiders, Eileen Raiders, they all got the same at. Right. It's all spelled out the same way. Um, I don't know if they're ghost accounts or someone's trying to pull fast. Maybe it's a gang. Maybe it's a Raider gang. Gang, gang. Hey. Hey. It's possible. Shout out to CD Key C. Shout out to Ballers Only. Sonny Ray Luna. Raiders Rachel. There's another one. Manuel Casal. Uh, Pete Nicoletti, Young Chuck, Voodoo Raider, Jace Morgan, Arturo Gaxiola. How do, you, how do how do you how Gaxiola? would you say that? Gaxiola? Gaxiola? Gaxiola. Is it an X? That's, that's pretty, yeah. Gaxiola, that's a cool name. Blitzed Sub. He said he'll fill in anytime. Dog, if Che ain't here, we ain't riding. Okay? <laughs> and if I'm not here, you can't work this shit. I'm just telling you that right now. Uh, shout out to the... Uh, well, first of all, he won't let you in the house to yeah, get to the studio. You ain't getting in here, y'all. Uh, shout out to uh, to, to Fly... And, and no disrespect, Blitz. Uh, I know you're part of that Blitz podcast. Y'all wild out there. Respect to you guys. Uh, shout out to the Fly Sweep podcast. I believe that's Matt Holder from the Raider Ramble. They just started a Raider podcast, so shout out to them. Uh, also, shout out to the Silver Shield podcast. You got some familiar faces over there. That's right. Including your man Bobby Wasabi and Raider VC. Shout out to y'all. See y'all doing your thing. Keep it up. Um, Tony W. Raider, uh, shout out to Dave Double Zero, uh, Garrett Thompson, Will, and Jawar Walker. One of these folks in here, and I can't remember exactly who it is, was like, why are these guys shouting me out on their show? Oh, yeah, there was there was some dude. I oh, saw it's, uh, that. it's this dude Garrett right here. Um, G something, or C-E, or what was it? Something, something. Uh, no, 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 hold on. Now that I've read them all, I can't find it. Uh, hold yo, on, let me see. Here's the reason why we shout you guys out. These are all the follows from the week, man. If you follow us, we're going to shout you out. Now, I'll pick through them. You know, if, if you're if you got the egg avatar, I'm not shouting you out. If you ain't got some Raiders in your thing, I ain't shouting you out. But this dude's like a scout. He's like a 
He's like an independent or up and coming. Maybe I don't want to use the word amateur, but he's a scout. And uh, so you're a football head. And we thought, hey, we thought we sh- we shouted you out. And he was like, I'm not even a big Raiders fan. I'm like, why'd you follow us? And he's actually, I like the Raiders. I'm like, well, which one is it? God damn it. <laughs> Make up your damn mind. Uh, but shout out to you anyways, because that's how we roll, man. One love, one love, one love. Um, shout out to y'all on YouTube. Shout out to Kaylin Sankey, uh, Kid Cali Gaming, uh, Mean 519, Raider Brandon. Sh- shout out to Schnitz. Schnitz. Jesus, is that that's your namesake, bro? That's a. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> shout out to Larry Anderson. Shout out to you guys. Um, by the way, if we've already shouted you out because you follow us on Twitter and Instagram, follow us on YouTube. Get another shout out. And if you're listening to this podcast right now, even if you're not down with the live stream, please subscribe to us on YouTube. Um, your subscription goes a long way, helping us get out there, increase exposure to the podcast, and helps us kind of do some more things that we really want to do with YouTube. YouTube sets these certain thresholds, these benchmarks that you got to hit yeah. in order to open up more stuff. So that's what we're really trying to do is build those followers on YouTube. So just hit the subscribe button. I know you guys go on YouTube at least once a day. Everybody does for something. Scroll on over to Pillaging Podcast. Just give us that subscribe button and walk away. If you're interested in the live chat, make sure you hit that bell so you get notified when we go live on air every Sunday. Uh, next week, a it looks like it's going to be Monday, Memorial Day. We'll hit you at the end of your holiday weekend because Sunday night, y'all going to be, uh, it's Chela season, bro. There you go. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but let me get out of the way. Take yeah. It. Go for it, bro. Shout outs on the IG account, yeah. man. Okay, shout yeah. outs to Raider Radical. Shout out to California Grown. Shout out to our boys who were just in here last week, the No Ledge Podcast. Follow you know. them at No Ledge Pod on Instagram. That's K N O. No W K N O L E D G E No Ledge. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Uh, shout out J sixty eight thirty four. Yeah. T M J Media. Yeah. Max seventy seven G M. Jingles. Are you? Get them. Get them. <laughs> shout out Metal Slim Jim eighty six. Ooh. Visualized by Mal or Mall. Let me say Mall. I'm gonna go with Mall. Mall. That sounds. That sounds doper. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. And then uh, shout out a special shout out. For this follow on Twitter. Yes. Shout out to the I Am Rappaport podcast, man. Dot com. That's, you know, the stereo. Stereo podcast. Stereo podcast. <laughs> okay. Shout out, man. We fucks with, with Mike Rap Heavy, man. Yeah. Uh, so that, that was pretty dope to get a follow from, from the I Am Rappaport podcast. Man. Hey, Mike, bring back G Moody, dog. Oh. There you go. Whatever it is you got, squash that beef. Bring back G Moody. Y'all hey. better together. G Moody, I'll fuck with your podcast, but y'all are better together, though. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? Man, I was about to hit him with that Richie Valens song. And we belong <laughs> together. <laughs> together. <laughs> yeah, for real, for really real, though. Till the end <laughs> of time. <laughs> <laughs> hit him with that slide. <laughs> Uh, big shout out to those that donated this week. Uh, Lepla Austin, which I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's Raider Austin, um, who's in the live chat right now. If I'm wrong, my bad. But shout out to you, Mr. Austin. And shout out to Richard Lacasse. Um, I hope I'm saying your name right. Richard, man. Richard's one of these uh, subscribers. Uh, he's a subscribe donor. Uh, PayPal lets you do this. Mm-hmm. You can set it up automatic. Um, man, is this show worth a dollar to you? Hey, If it's worth a dollar, we would love to have it. <laughs> a dollar we're trying to do this live video stream from the tailgate i know some of y'all can't get out to raider games some of yeah, y'all man. never been to a raider game yeah. so we want to show you a little bit of that flavor we've done the recorded shows we want to do a live stream the unofficial official raider pregame show yeah. straight from the heart of oakland california can you imagine that yo God. you guys can sit on your couch at home Wherever it is that you that you watch the mm-hmm. Raider games from, okay, mm-hmm. you can sit on your couch at home. You can pull up that laptop, you can pull up YouTube, that stream, and you can watch the Pillaging podcast. And you could be in the fucking tailgate live and in effect getting chill out up with us, man. Yeah. While you wait for the game to start, and yeah. you can start pre gaming with us, man, because we start at gates open, man, at eight o'clock. That's when we start. Yeah, that's when we get down. You know what I'm saying? So uh, help us out. Again, if this show's worth a dollar to you, man, hook us up. Help us out. If it's worth 25 cents a week and you want to donate a dollar a month, do that too. Whatever you can contribute helps. I'm, I'm seriously, I swear to God, whatever you can, it helps. It all goes into the pile. Uh, we got enough listeners where we can really make something else happen special this year. Every year, if you haven't noticed, we grow. There's some new production element to the show. Why? Well, because we're 
we're creative. And two, because you made it possible. You made it possible. Yeah, absolutely. And we, and we, we come out of pocket. Um, yeah. But, man, you really help. But we're just regular dudes. We got day jobs. Yeah, man. Uh, we're going to be up to like 2 in the morning tonight, and we're going to go to work tomorrow. Um, but if you can, man, you appreciate do, it. And if you can't, you can't, bro. As long as you're tuning in, that's what we really want. So uh, I do that ask every week, um, but it's just an ask. It's not a requirement. There's no paywalls here. But um, with all that said, that's it for this week's show. Make sure you tune in every week wherever podcasts are found. Call in, leave a message to be played on air, 408-909-PJFF. We need some new voices. Yeah. Uh, download the official pillaging app available for iOS and Android. Uh, make sure you check out dc 4 customtscom and one nation uh, Be sure to listen to the other podcasts on the Crossness Podcast Network. If you haven't already, check out the Put on Waivers podcast. Dwayne is doing big things over there. He's actually releasing his show almost every day of the week. He's broken out, broken it up into smaller bite sized chunks for y'all, fun sized pieces for y'all. Check him out. And it's more than just Raiders. That's like an all-sports show. So if you're just a sports fan, that's a show for you. Uh, East Coast Nation just relaunched with Monster Mask Ken and uh, Easy e over there and your boy Potts. Um, and check out the Nebra Nation podcast. Check out the Crow's Nest podcast. Check out the Ladies of Darkness podcast. The Roll Knowledge on. podcast. The, no, uh, the, the new kids on the block, the yeah, Knowledge man. podcast. Uh, Raider fans for a show. And, and they they kind of cover a lot, man. Those dude, those guys are fun. That's my favorite independent podcast. Yeah. Since, yeah. since before they joined the network, I was man. cracking up when I was riding up here, man. You so walked in the saying. house laughing. Yeah, bro. I was laughing. <laughs> like, this fool laughing at bro. <laughs> um, but yeah, just definitely check out the network, please, uh, please, please, please. Uh, there's got to be at least another show on there for y'all to enjoy. Yeah, uh, we appreciate you guys. Stay tuned in with us. Keep the wind in your sails and the rum in your mug. And Pillage on Raider Nation. This has been a product of the Crow's Nest Podcast Network. I'm Kenny Stapler. Join us always by your boy Chi. We out you. Peace. Go Raiders.